in the rain in Clemson with his left shoulder tightly wrapped. At Tallahassee, Florida State's Charlie Ward was being led to the locker room with severe bruises to the ribs. But today finds both quarterbacks ready for action. Malinovich leads the ACC in total yards and is on pace to becoming Maryland's all-time leading passer. Charlie Ward is running away with the Heisman Trophy, completing 70% of his passes and an amazing 144 straight attempts without an interception. We're armed and dangerous in today's ACC Game of the Week. Jefferson Pilot Sports presents the best in regional college football. The Atlantic Coast Conference. The Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. For high performance, rely on the Tiger. By Pepsi. Be young. Have fun. Drink Pepsi. By Delta Airlines. With the industry's best overall record of passenger satisfaction, even business trips are a pleasure on Delta. By Lee Apparel. With regular, relaxed, and loose-fit jeans, Lee is the brand that fits. By your local Mazda dealer. By First Union. When it comes to service, everything matters. And by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. The vision to power your dreams. They're expecting Bird Stadium to fill to capacity today for the Exxon ACC Game of the Week because the number one Florida State Seminoles come a-calling against the Maryland Terrapins. We are live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our ACC Game of the Week. I'm Tim Brando. By my side is Jack Corrigan. Just moments prior to the start of this game, much of the intrigue was finally taken away. Charlie Ward will not be the starting quarterback. Danny Cannell will get the nod. And, Jack, why don't you outline the reasons why? Well, Charlie Ward hurt uh, the rib area last week against Wake Forest. He practiced three days this week, but... They apparently, the uh, Florida State medical staff, decided uh, not to play Charlie Ward. And when you look at the remaining schedule for Florida State, that's part of the reason why. The big battle with number two Notre Dame next week. And then two more top 25 teams. And so you've got a 1-7 Maryland team. You figure you can look by them. But when we talked to Bobby Bowden yesterday, he said his Seminole team still has an awful lot to play for today. Well, you're always... Uh, trying to keep their attention on a game and to why it is important. This happens to be a very important game for us, more important for us than it is Maryland. If Maryland wins the football game, they still don't win the championship. If we lose it, it can knock us out of it. If we lose it, it can knock us out of a January the 1st bowl. If we win the ball game, we're guaranteed a January the 1st bowl. So. There are a lot of reasons to make us want to play good. No question about that. And, Jack, if you're wondering which was the last team to get over 400 yards against his vaunted defense, the Maryland Terrapins, that team. And Scott Milanovic, the quarterback on the other side, may be hurt but will be playing with a dream possibly coming true. I think you definitely have to believe you can win. Uh, every week you see a big upset from a team that wasn't supposed to beat another highly ranked team. And, uh, you know, anytime you put on a pad, it's possible. And, and if you don't believe it and you don't dream it, it's never going to happen. More on the quarterbacks from FSU when we come back. Back at Bird Stadium here in College Park, Maryland, Florida State preparing for the Maryland Terrapins. And Jack Corgan is by my side. And, Jack, we need to update some folks from the outside looking in as to why John Stark doesn't get the call and Danny Cannell does. Well, it's Danny Cannell's week, if you can believe that. Basically, what Florida State does, they have two very fine young quarterbacks, Danny Cannell and John Stark. Danny Cannell will get the start this afternoon. They literally alternate these guys on back-to-back -back weeks. John Stark was the backup quarterback last week. Danny Cannell gets the turn this week. If Charlie Ward is back and ready to go against Notre Dame next week, John Stark will be the backup. John Stark would play today if Danny Cannell gets hurt, but if uh, the situation were such that Maryland's really uh, trying to pull the upset and Cannell gets hurt, we'll see Charlie Ward back in the game. But the chances of Maryland pulling off that upset were severely hampered when they lost a fine offensive performer, the leading receiver in the ACC, Jermaine Lewis. Jermaine Lewis is just a speed burner par excellence. I mean, you look at the numbers there, 957 yards 
in eight ball games. He is the legitimate deep threat for Maryland. And with him out of the lineup, Mansell Johnson will take his place, Tim. Has very good speed. He's on the track team here at Maryland, but does not have the experience nor the pass-catching ability of Jermaine Lewis. So it's it certainly uh, making it that much more difficult for Scott Milanovic today. All right, stay with us. The Maryland Terrapins looking ahead to the possibility of one of those once-in-a-lifetime opportunities to knock off number one. That's why you play it instead of talk about it. We're going to stop talking. Florida State and Maryland here at Bird Stadium in College Park. Tim Brando along with Jack Corrigan. Happy to have you with us for our Exxon ACC Game of the Week. There is a front that is moving towards the East Coast, but for the moment it appears that the rain is gone and we should have good conditions for this afternoon's game. Scattered showers are in the forecast, though. They had the field covered yesterday. Bobby Bowden and his Seminoles could only look from the sidelines of Bird Stadium yesterday, but because they had that field covered with all the rain yesterday, the field conditions themselves, if it doesn't rain, are going to be outstanding. The field is really bone dry. Coach Bowden in the midst of a 15-game winning streak, one of many streaks that he's had in his storied career. And Mark Duffner, who had such an outstanding career in the Yankee Conference with Holy Cross, now in his second season here at Maryland, laboring a bit through an injury-riddled season and a very young team, 1-7 and seven and 1-4 and four in ACC play. Eighth overall year in coaching and got into this business as a GA under Woody Hayes, so he has been well-tutored. It's had uh, some good bloodlines to follow, that's for sure. Look at that stat this year. Well, in part, that's because they've given up a lot of points, but they also do a pretty good job of winning the opening coin toss. Maryland did win the toss and elected to receive. Andrew Carter, along with Alan Williams and Jermaine Stewart at drop back feet. Scott Bentley will do the honors for Florida State. The kicking woes of this FSU program still very much in the news. Dan Mowry will be punting today because of an injured Scott Liss, Sean Liss. And it comes down to Williams. Williams to the 30. And without Bentley, he may have scored. He's up near the 40-yard line, a 35-yard return, and as you mentioned, they've had a lot of experience at kickoff return. Well, Alan Williams, a youngster, has really come on as we take a look at the Mazda starting lineup behind sophomore quarterback Scott Milanovic from Butler, Pennsylvania. Mason will be the lone setback. Russ Weaver will catch a lot of balls in the absence of Jermaine Lewis, Steve Ingram, and Jamie Bragg, their best offensive lineman. The super back is Mark Mason. Behind Milanovic. Mason gets it and bounces outside. He has three yards up to the 43-yard line. Against that Florida State defense, you're going to have difficulty running wide because the down linemen, McIntosh, Spain, and Alexander have excellent speed, and the linebackers headed up by Alexander and Brooks are even better. We talked about the secondary, one of the best in the country. Second down and five after the gain of five by Mason. They go without the huddle, but Milanovic does check out the defense before calling the play. He goes with the counter, and it's near the first down yardage at the 48-yard line of Maryland. Maybe about a yard shy. Derek Brooks, yes, he is back. While Charlie Ward may not be playing, another Heisman Trophy candidate coming into the season is. If you look at the numbers on Scott Milanovic, and, uh, He's going to do something many pro quarterbacks from this fine Maryland program have never done, and that's throw for better than 3,000 yards in his career. Mason comes up short on third and short, and very quickly, Mark Duffner has a decision to make, and the crowd wants him to go for it. Well, keep in mind that Milanovic is their punter, and that's what he's going to do. Mason looked like he twisted his ankle. I think he stepped on the foot of Eric Greenstein, his right guard and never got going Milanovic by the way second in the ACC in punting at 43 yards per punt Corey Sawyer drops back for FSU to receive high spiraling punt Sawyer calls for the fair catch and it will be blown dead at the 26 yard line and that's where Florida State will open up 
first down and 10. And it's Danny Cannell that gets the start at quarterback for Florida State this afternoon. William Floyd will play on occasion, but they'll run a lot of one back with Sean Jackson. Still a very young offensive line, but getting very good. Clay Shiver, the center, is one of the best in the country. He is going to be an outstanding football player. Danny Cannell will bring back some memories of Peter Tom Willis, to those of you that have followed Florida State. Drop back quarterback, loves the patterns that are across the middle, the post or the slant pattern. They may run some of those to give him some confidence. Jackson takes off. Sean Jackson with plenty of room. They'll mark him down just inside the Maryland 45. Andriel Johnson made the tackle, a 29-yard pickup pick for the senior from New Orleans, Louisiana. Well, it is a small and banged-up Maryland defense, also inexperienced. Sean Jackson, you saw the average yards per carry for this guy. He is having an outstanding year. Power back with great speed. Boy, you love that combo. They will run probably more two-back sets with Cannell in the ballgame. They've got Lonnie Johnson in a tight end as well. Likely to see some of Warren Dunn early in this game as well. Jackson slips on the turf. It's a bit wet down there, but field conditions a bit better than some might think, given the rain that we've had of late. There you see the defense for this Terrapin team, and obviously they've been nicked up, though Johnny Hicks is their leader up front. Well, the guy who is outstanding, number 46, Ratcliffe Thomas. Watch that young man at inside linebacker, a true freshman. He is going to be outstanding. I also like Orlando Strozier, number seven. He is their best cover man. He'll have uh, the difficult assignments to the wide side of the field. On second and 13, Jackson bobbles it. And the linebacker, Flores, comes up quickly to cut him off. He got some help also from Lamont Gore. Jaime Flores, 49, helped force that play to the boundary. Well, Jackson had a little bit of trouble at first catching the toss from Cannell. There's the action that Tim talked about with Flores stringing it out and nothing but red jerseys in front of Sean Jackson. Danny Cannell with his first third down call of the day. Look at the numbers on them this year as a team, but much of that with Charlie Ward at quarterback. McCorvey and Tamaric Vanover are in the game at wideouts on third and 13. on the way down. Matt Fryer, the senior from Live Oak, Florida, gave it all he had and nearly came up with a circus catch. Cannell was looking for Fryer all the way on the deep dig route over the middle, and Danny just got it out beyond the grasp of Fryer, who short-hopped it, tried to get away with it, but the officials were right there. Maryland's got to feel pleased that they've shut down Florida State after that big play on the first play from scrimmage. John Jackson's 29-yard run, and then Maryland stuffed FSU in their opening sequence. It's Mallory punting it away, and Strozier has it at the 12. He gets up to the 20, and that's all. 11.37 remaining in the opening quarter here from Bird Stadium in College Park, Maryland. The number one Seminoles trying to hold on before they head to Notre Dame next week. You're looking at William Floyd who picked up an unsportsmanlike conduct. We're trying to determine if in fact he has been tossed from the game. It has given Maryland outstanding field position, and Bobby Bowden gave Floyd a lot of lift during that timeout. Well, there were actually offsetting unsportsmanlikes initially, Tim, and then they called a second one on Floyd that gave the 15-yard markoff to Florida State. So rather than being at their own 20, they're at their own 35 to begin with this wide-open passing attack. And Milanovic will roll to his right. His man, that's Andrew Carter. That's his 12th catch of the year. He does have one touchdown reception this season. That pickup is 13, and it's a Terrapin first down. Excellent play fake by Alvin Williams, the super back, the lone running back behind Milanovic. It froze the linebackers and enabled the quarterback to get outside and hit Andrew Carter, one of his two slot receivers. Carter and Weaver will shift from side to side, but Mansell Johnson and Kramus will stay left to right, respectively, as the wider receivers. Williams managed to 
get his footing. He was about to slip, but did stay alive long enough to pick up two. Enzo Armella made the stop. Who's yep. a backup uh, nose guard to Connell Spain. Alan Williams began the season as a defensive back, playing a lot of time, but they have moved him to that running back spot with injuries to Mason and Doug Burnett. We saw Mason twist an ankle earlier. I don't know if he's going to be back in the ball game or not. Oh, they have really been decimated by injuries, added to the fact that Jermaine Lewis is unavailable for this afternoon's game. Second and eight. Williams, nothing doing. Ran right into Ken Alexander, the senior from Austin, Texas, along with Enzo Armella. Florida State still without their fine nose guard John Nance, but our Mellon company have filled in well. And the Alexanders, no relation for uh, Florida State, certainly can play as well as anybody. And now we've got an injured player. That, I believe, is our Armella who is down. Lined up and then all of a sudden fell back down. I'm not sure what happened there. A delayed reaction, to say the least. But, you know, talking about this Maryland offense, and we mentioned it, they're the last team to get over 400 yards of total offense against Florida State. See if we can see on the right side of the screen as we unpile what happened to Armella. Started out all right, and then asking for some help, and had to go down on one knee and finally uh, able to walk off under his own power. The point I was about to make is that this is an offense, Jack, that has moved well between the 20. But in the red zone, this offense has had its share of problems. Last week at Clemson, we'll talk about that. It was unbelievable. Third and eight. For another first down, Jason Primus. Two passes for 25 yards now for Milanovic as he grows in confidence against this magnificent Florida State defense. Well, good protection by that offensive line to give Milanovic time to find Kremis on the curl route. Jason, the senior out of Northampton, Pennsylvania, has had a fine year. He has really been a guy who has benefited from this new offense that Mark Duffner brought to Maryland two seasons ago. Williams, right up the gut. Inside the 35-yard line, Derek Alexander, the sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida, made the tackle. Derek Alexander is a 6'5", 260-pound defensive end who is probably faster than most linebackers in the country. He is so quick off the football. Number 90. You watch him. He's at the bottom of the screen right now on that Florida State defense. Second and seven for the Terrapins. Williams, the super back with a super hole. First down, Maryland at the 15. 18 yards for Williams. Great play call by Dan Durazio, the offensive coordinator. I was telling you about Alexander's quickness. His quickness here cost him. They trap him. He walked right into the trap block of Dave Hack, and Alan Williams had a giant hole to take it down inside the 20. Sometimes a player's quickness can be a problem. That time they took advantage of it by trapping Alexander for a big game. Used primarily this year in kickoff returns, averaging 22 yards for return, freshman from Thomasville, Georgia, Alan Williams. Twenty-five second clock. Well, that's that's hard to have happen when you don't use a huddle. I mean, it takes a while. Dead ball, the lead game, offense, five yard penalty, first down. Our referee today, Michael Dover, the umpire W. Clark Gaston Jr., headlinesman Michael Samples, and Richard Williamson is our field judge this afternoon. You know, you know why you had that penalty? There's uh, Charlie Ward trying to stay warm, and I said they got inside the 20. They're in the red zone. That's when Maryland starts having the problems. This is the seventh play of the drive that began at the Maryland 36. Williams again. Boy, you have to be impressed with the job being done by this forward wall of Maryland. James Roberson made the tackle 
as Bragg and Hack opened up quite a hole. And Charlie Ward, well covered today, staying warm for the battle in South Bend next week. Well, I asked some of the Florida State coaches if they thought this was good preparation. Mickey Anders, the defensive coordinator, said, no, I don't think it's an advantage. We're only here four or five hours. He says, I'd rather be home in Tallahassee if Bill Campbell. Second and ten. Five-step drop. Complete at the 11. And pushed back quickly. At that point, Russ Weaver. Clifton Abraham was there to knock him back. Let's watch the reading of the Florida State defense by Scott Milanovic. Drops back, surveys the whole territory. When he feels the pressure coming on from Enzo Armella, he goes to the guy in the short flat, Russ Weaver, a transfer from a Division three school, John Carroll in Cleveland. Third and five from the Seminole 11. He has the first down. Or at least is going to be awful close to it. The draw play on third and five. Florida State has played very basic defense to this point. They have not tried to put a, an over amount of pressure on Milanovic. Fans hear it. Uh, I don't know first stadium didn't like the spot, yeah. that's for sure. I don't either. And I don't care who wins this game. They just got a very poor spot. Particularly for this offense, they got a poor spot. He had made it by far more than that. Justice preserved. And Mark Duffner is standing and applauding. Now, Mark Duffner last week, as we watch Alan Williams get the first down to keep the drive alive, three times Maryland had drives of more than 11 plays that got inside the Clemson 15-yard line, and they did not score any points on those three drives. They have to score here. The difference with this Maryland offense is Williams. He has 31 yards on the ground in this drive on six carries. He gets it again and fumbles, but luckily Milanovic right there to pick it up back at the 14-yard line. Derek Brooks cracking through the junior from Pensacola who's had the two interceptions returned for a touchdown and a fumble recovery for a touchdown already this year. I asked Mickey Andrews if the defense does anything different when Derek Brooks is not in the lineup. He says, no, we do the same thing. We just don't get as many big plays. Derek Brooks is the big play man in that Florida State defense like Charlie Ward is in their offense. No surprise that he was the defensive player of the year in the country in high school. He is outstanding. Second and goal from the 13. Florida State splits it. Milanovic gets away. Tucks it and is down at the 8. Abraham was about to load up and Milanovic wisely hit the deck. <laughs> Watch this replay. I love watching this Florida State team. I mean, it looks like Milanovic has got acres of green in front of him. Now watch the white shirts converge. If there is a collectively quicker defense in the country, I wouldn't want to meet him because those guys fly to the football. Abraham and Richard Coe is doing large part to that speed. Milanovic three for three in the air for 30 yards. Passing situation here. Quick drop. He throws for the corner. Right through the hands of his intended receiver. Mansell Johnson, the freshman from Eleanor Roosevelt High in Langham, Maryland, had a chance at that one. Drew single coverage from Corey Sawyer, and Milanovic under pressure from Todrick McIntosh, just as he threw the ball, made a good throw, and Sawyer actually mistimed his jump. But Johnson couldn't come up with it. If you hate to talk about the what-ifs, but if that was Jermaine Lewis, Maryland's on the board. Fourth and goal, they go for it because of their kicking problems, which is something that has also stymied their offense this year. Milanovic to Johnson again, incomplete. Broken up by Sawyer. And the Florida State defense gets the job done. And again, the lack of confidence in Maryland's kicking game plays with the head of their head coach, Mark Duffner. 
A long drive ends with nothing. 13 plays for Maryland. We'll be back after this word from your local station. Keep in mind, Jermaine Lewis not able to play Mansell Johnson with just eight catches on the season. He's got the speed, but not the experience. Couldn't come up with the leaping catch against Corey Sawyer. So the Seminoles begin this time at the nine-yard line. Danny Cannell, the quarterback. Excellent defensive work by Maryland. Warwick Dunn stopped behind the line of scrimmage. You're looking now at the kicker, their specialist, who is just a walk-on freshman, Lytle, Ken Lytle, and he's been stymied all year. The numbers reflect that. They also lost to the Armist, which hurt them, that forced them into that situation. Yeah, they've never been comfortable with their place kicking all year. Maryland, but I tell you what, the defense, uh, thanks to the off-track, has been able to hang in there so far. Dunn. Warwick Dunn, who had eight rushes last week for 162 yards against Wake Forest. Converted quarterback slash defensive back at the collegiate level, now playing where he always wanted to play, in the backfield at FSU. 5'9", 170 pounds. He said he came to Florida State not because he wanted to be a star. He came to a place that was going to win. He said, that's what I want to do. I want to win. Seven knocks and Tamaric Vanover. And at the wideout spots on third and three for Danny Canal. The out pattern to McCorvey. Slips both tacklers and gets the first down at the 23. Two missed tackles enabled McCorvey to make the line for the first down. One of the things that has really helped this fast break offense of Florida State, when they moved Kez McCorvey into that slot position, he has got the size and the strength to handle the blocking, but he also has the elusiveness and the speed in some of the matchups, Tim. He is just too much physically for a strong safety or an outside linebacker. Matt Fryer in the game in the slot, Dunn the long setback, and they swing it out to Warwick Dunn. Good cutback by Dunn up to the 28-yard line. Bobby Bowden very proud of Warwick Dunn and the job that he has done in this his freshman year. Our leading ground gainer last year, Tiger McMillan, tore his knee up before the season started, <clears throat> so that threw Dunn as a third-team tailback. And then, of course, every time he's gotten in a ball game, he's just done excellent. Something we had not accounted on, something that we couldn't foresee, and he so far has been the surprise of all of our freshmen this year. Personal foul being called against Maryland at the end of that play to give Florida State even better field position. I'll say one thing about young Mr. Dunn. He is as elusive a running back as you'd ever want to see. He has got, he's got more moves. Well, he's a great human interest story as well. We'll touch on it a bit later during the game, but Charlie Ward and trophy front runner is his roommate. That's helped him make the transition as well. From the 44, Canal goes back over to Dunn. Radcliffe Thomas, the aforementioned freshman of influence, rides him out of bounds just shy of midfield at the 49. There's Radcliffe out of Woodbridge, Virginia, T.C. Williams and Hargrave. Radcliffe Thomas comes into this game with 77 tackles down to 220 to play here in the first quarter and normally Florida State piles on the points so far held off the scoreboard. Canal to Fryer. First down, Seminoles near the Terrapin 40-yard line. Pickup of 11, Lamont Gore made the stop. Matt Fryer is their possession guy, although he's got deceptive speed evidenced by the long touchdown against Miami. You put the ball in Matt Fryer's neighborhood, and he's going to lay claim to it. Just over two minutes left in the opening quarter. Game moving quickly. Both teams driving against the opposing defenses. Canal to Knox, and Kevin Knox. Takes it inside the Terrapin 20 down to the 16 and Radcliffe Thomas again running him down from behind. A 23-yard pickup. 
when they go to their one back set with the four receivers Knox and McCorvey are excellent size for the slot receivers with great acceleration Cannell rolls to his right McCorvey touchdown boy that looked awfully easy didn't it Danny Cannell with the touchdown toss to McCorvey They were able to shut them down for a while, but that personal foul really seemed to change the tempo on this drive for Florida State. Danny Cannell got warmed up a little bit, throwing the easy passes, and then started going farther downfield. They go to the rollout this time, and Cannell with the perfect touch to McCourty in the corner. Stop Bentley to tack on the point. Florida State makes good on their opportunity. 17 yards on the touchdown pass from Cannell to Kez McCarvey, who now only needs two catches to catch up with Hassan Jones on the all-time receiving list for touchdowns at Florida State. Back to Bird Stadium in a moment. One more look at the first score of the afternoon. Danny Cannell with good protection as he rolls out, and Kez McCarvey running a corner route. Look at the touch by Cannell here. Right on the button with yeah, about a yard and a half to spare. He's trying to become the eighth place all-time receiver, passing Hassan Jones as you look at the return men for the Maryland Terrapins. Alan Williams is back there. Along with Stewart, Jermaine Stewart. Jermaine Stewart, four yards deep besides to go about five yards deep and hit a knee. First Union presents around the ACC. Today, North Carolina State in a meaningful game at Wallace Wade Stadium against Duke. Baylor's playing Georgia Tech. Very important game for Baylor's hopes for a bowl bid. Georgia Tech going for a winning season. And last week against Maryland, Derek Weatherspoon. Had an outstanding day. 19 rushes, 173 yards, and two touchdowns. That should take you around the ACC today. productive drive that once again stalled inside the Florida State 10-yard line picks up two long drive on the receiving end of that meaningless long drive for Maryland eight plays 91 yards for FSU and that's what great teams will do to you Canal is six of seven passing the football in relief of Charlie Ward today second and eight for Milanovic and his terrible to Derek Alexander among others Todd Rebol also in on the pile it is not going to be an easy day for the left side of that Maryland offensive line against Derek Alexander and now Alexander shifts into a tackle spot on the inside for he is a load third down and seven from a lot of it picked off by Abraham his interception last week gave the FSU defense its seventh seventh touchdown this year that's more than the opposition has scored against him well they put Derek Alexander inside and he put a lot of pressure on Scott Milanovic his throw was behind Walt Williams and Maryland after the long drive goes three and out this time it'll be good field position for Florida State particularly with a guy like Corey Sawyer back there to field the punt. Milanovic will get it off around his 12. Aims for the corner, recognizing that Sawyer is there. Not a bad idea. But Florida State gets outstanding field position. In fact, this mark is going to be all the way up at the 40-yard line. Duffner is pretty angry about it. Our college scoreboard shows Miami up on Pittsburgh, 14 to nothing. Boston College leading Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech uh, back into the top 25 just this week. Duke up on wow. NC State. Well, you had to figure 
that Barry Wilson's decision this week could bring an emotional response from the Blue Devils at home against the Wolfpack. That punt only measured 17 yards from Milanovic. Floyd, after a personal foul, takes out his anguish against the Maryland defense. He's ridden out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Orlando Strozier over there to bulldog him out after a 14-yard gain. Don't let that shotgun formation or that spread offense fool you into thinking that this Florida State team cannot run with anybody. They've got a host of running backs. William Floyd, the junior, with excellent speed. He can even play some tight end. He did that a lot last year before they went more to this fast break offense, as they call it. back but they'll mark it at the 20 about three yards shy of a first down when we come back for the second quarter maryland moved but once again came up empty florida state leading by a touchdown at the end of the first quarter katarina Vitt and more on ice we open the second quarter florida state at the maryland 20 and the maryland defense there and waiting for the pass in the flat to sean jackson Taking a look at the Lee first half stats, Maryland had the ball for more than 10 and a half minutes, but Florida State with a 91-yard drive and the lone touchdown thus far has a 50-yard edge in terms of total offense. Maryland has to be pleased uh, with that rushing number, though, Tim. 42 yards with Allen Williams, the young freshman. They ran well off the right side against Florida State. Third and three. Quick slant to McCorvey. First down for Florida State near the 11-yard line. Some pressure coming from Jaime Flores, but Canal got it away. Well, you talk about the experience of this Florida State team. On the previous play, Sean Jackson had the screen pass in his hands, but he was going to lose about six yards, and he just smartly dropped the ball for an incompletion to make it third and three for Canal instead of third and seven or eight. Pretty good start for the backup, right? 8 of 10, 83 yards. Canell dumps it out to Fryer. And he's ushered out of bounds near the 8. Well, Danny Cannell came to Florida State with an awful impressive resume. He was a high school All-American out of Westminster Academy in Fort Lauderdale. He's an even better baseball player. He was a ninth-round pick of the Milwaukee Brewers, Tim, out of high school and, and plays for the Florida State baseball team. And not uncommon that they have multi-sport talent at FSU. That is right. Talk to Pat Kennedy and Mike Martin about getting some of Bobby Bowden's best talent. And vice versa. That works both ways. Some can go on scholarships for baseball or basketball as you see the movement along that front line. Well, Jaime Flores was moving, but so was Jesus Hernandez, number 74. But what happened is I guess they're saying that Flores made contact with Hernandez before Hernandez moved. Flores definitely comes into the neutral zone, but boy, now that's a bad call. That's a bad call. Defensive man can move and get back as long as he doesn't make contact. That offensive man has to stay still, and you could see quite clearly that Hernandez moved before. That's a break for Florida State, a team that doesn't need too many. Second and one for the first down, three for the touchdown. Jackson, fumble. Canal does come up with it at the nine. Had Jackson come up with that ball, he probably would have scored. Couldn't tell initially whether he didn't get the ball into the midsection if he left it on the hip. Uh, he, he was a little tardy in getting that ball all the way in, and it caught Jackson on the right hip, and Lamont Gore nearly got to the ball before Danny Cannell. That's the first indication that Florida State's been using someone other than Charlie Ward in this game. Third and seven. Canal has been pinpoint 
with his accuracy when given time this afternoon. They have so many weapons. That quartet of receivers. I mean, who do you guard? Who do you try and put a little extra help on? They just run a quick little crossing pattern, and Kevin Knox comes into the end zone virtually untouched. Scott Bentley's extra point is good. That may not be a good sign for Notre Dame, but Bobby Bowden's got his kicking game together next week. Could be a long day for the Irish. 14 to nothing early in the second here at Maryland. Jesus Hernandez got away with another flinch on the touchdown. See how the right tackle moved early? That's the second time in the drive that he moved early, and it did not go against Florida State. Quick slant to Kevin Knox as Danny Cannell gets the second touchdown pass of the first half. Bentley's kick is to Stewart, and he bobbles it. Down inside the five. Matters. Could not get much worse for Mark Guffner. Henry Puckett made the stop. Coming up next week, it's Maryland and North Carolina State or Georgia Tech and Wake Forest. Check your listings. Or you could get this game. The Virginia Cavaliers against the Clemson Tigers. A veritable plethora of ACC action for you to choose from. A cornucopia yes. of football. There you have it. More than half the league. Veritable <laughs> to you. There you go. Mark Mason has checked into the game. Kevin Foley is also in the game at a wide receiver spot. Foley in a quarterback, I beg your pardon. And the handoff goes up the middle to Mason. Well, Milanovic will have to get word on if, in fact, that shoulder is giving him some problems. See Foley's numbers, his father a coach at East High School in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And if you're a fan of the Boston College Eagles, you know all about older brother Glenn, who is trying to engineer an upset against Virginia Tech this afternoon. Second and eight for Foley and company. And again, we'll try to find out if in fact there's a problem physically with Milanovic. Foley lets it fly, Marker's down, and it's complete. Johnson. Out of bounds at the 25. I think you're going to get an interference or a holding call against Clifton Abraham. This play should stay because Mansell Johnson, the sprinter, just ran by. Just ran by Abraham. Foley stepped up and let it fly, and Johnson with a great catch to atone for the two that he might have had in the end zone. That's the call Mike Dover tells us that it was holding. Well, that's what you teach a defensive back. When you've got man coverage, if a guy's doing an out and up and you're burned, grab him and try and pull him down. But Mansell Johnson able to run by Clifton Abraham and give Maryland a good opportunity again down at the 25-yard line of Florida State. 44 remaining in the second quarter. Foley just checking in for Scott Milanovic. One can only speculate that his shoulder may have been bothering him. He did absorb a few hits in the first quarter. Nothing doing for Mason there. I'll tell you what, Derek Alexander, this is the second Florida State telecast I've done. I saw Florida State handle Clemson and Alexander was all over the field and it's it's more the same he is so quick off the ball he lettered in five sports in high school at Haynes High School in Jacksonville five sports second and 11 for the Terrapin Foley against the blitz finds his man Freeman he has the first down inside the 15 to the 13 of Florida State. A 13-yard pickup. Abraham and Coase combine on the stop for the Seminoles. Again, Dan DeRazio, the offensive coordinator for Maryland, with a good play call against the blitz package. They come with the wide receiver screen and premise did a good job of working back to the outside to pick up the first down well kevin foley's only come in and gone two for two for 81 yards but they're in that red zone where they haven't been able to finish it off and here they are again carter's 
in the game at one slot receiving position. Mason bounces outside, but you very rarely get anything going laterally against the FSU defense. Abraham, Brooks, and Moore to take him out of bounds. Six carries now for Mason, who did leave for a series or two. In fact, it was Alan Williams that spearheaded Maryland's earlier drive. Mason's got that great ability to bounce outside, but you're right, Tim. It just doesn't work against that team speed of the Florida State defense. There are a lot of things that teams like to do against most teams that don't work against FSU. Play action face. Forget about it. They're too quick. Most of the time, you're exactly right. Second and nine. Foley dumps it away. Ken Alexander, the strong linebacker, the senior from Austin, came in a hurry. There's Scott Milanovic on the sideline signaling in the plays. We have no indication yet. They are telling us nothing wrong with him physically. Mark Duffner making the change, trying the other youngster, the redshirt freshman Foley at quarterback. There had been some thought in recent games that because of this offense, you've got to take it quickly. And Milanovic, at times, there has been some criticism that maybe he would exercise his options to hang on to the ball a bit too long. Well, against the pressure of a Florida State defense, you can't hang on to it too long. Hard to be very critical, though, of someone that has been as productive as Milanovic, given all of the problems Maryland has had this year. Foley makes the decision incomplete. Going to get a flag. Pass was intended. Wade Inge, I think, was yep. the intended receiver, and Corey Sawyer, I think, bumped him too soon. Wade Inge, another of the many young players on this team. Foley on the rollout, able to step up and get a little extra time, and there is Sawyer coming over the top of Inge in his efforts to get to the ball. Now, I'm sure Corey's telling the officials, hey, the ball was in the air. I was just trying to get the football, which he was, unfortunately. Mr. Inge's head was in the way. This is a good news, bad news penalty, though. That's not fair. Defense, ball be spotted at two-yard line. Automatic first. Don't you think Duffner would rather have it at the eight or nine than the two? Well, because I, they don't have anybody big to run the ball either. I mean, all their running backs is small. First and goal. Foley checking off. He still has 12 on the huddle clock. Why they don't go with the huddle. It gives them that option for a checkoff. Mason. Stop short at the one. There has been only one other rushing touchdown this year given up by Florida State. That came against Duke late in the ball game after a block punt when Duke had it first and goal on the one. Again, he can play with his kid. It's a quick call and he makes it. Touchdown Foley sneak and going without benefit of the huddle had as much to do with that touchdown as any other aspect of the play without question kevin foley becoming the second player this year to score a touchdown on the ground against florida state and that's only the second touchdown on the ground in almost two seasons against that florida state defense the advantage of the no huddle, as Tim indicated, helped fully out in that situation. The extra point is no good. Again, the problems with their kicking. John Milligan gave it a try that time. The senior from McLean, Virginia. Good surge by the offensive line as Maryland gets on the board. A 95-yard drive ends with a touch. 14 to 6 our score as you look at Kevin Foley who comes into the game for Milanovic in relief and throws up some outstanding passes and then sneaks it in for the touchdown. Only the second rushing touchdown against Florida State's defense this year. John Milligan, who missed the extra point, will kick off. down at the 37-yard line, and that's where the Seminoles will take over. It almost looked like for a second that Maryland was going to try an onside kick with Milligan. There's the number on the scoring drive again, the big 95 in eight plays. 
Foley with a touch. Now, Foley was a very highly recruited player out of East High School in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And as I mentioned, his brother Glenn, the starting quarterback for the last three years at Boston College. Well, look at that time of possession for Maryland. Over eight minutes longer than Florida State. But it uh, doesn't take long for Florida State to score touchdowns. That's why they call their offense the fast break. Canell over the middle. McCorvey has been his favorite target this afternoon. That was Wayne Messam on the receiving end. He'll check out. McCorvey comes back in. He and Tamaric Vanover. Interestingly, we have not called Vanover's number, and neither has this Florida State offense during much of this season on the offensive end. Floyd near a first down at the 46-yard line. Well, that just shows you how much they have in their arsenal because a year ago, Tamaric Vanover, much more a part of this Florida State offense. Well, Brad Scott's done a wonderful job as the offensive coordinator for Florida State. He was the one along with the other offensive coaches that a year ago before the Maryland game convinced Bobby Bowden to go to this fast break offense and the numbers it has produced, amazing. State near the 49 yard line. Mark Sturdivant, who had been injured much of this season, in fact, had not played prior to today's game since the early moments of the Virginia game at the start of the season. Fractured an ankle in that game, but the senior, one of the tri captains, said, Hey, number one team in the country, I want to play in that game. Took a while for them to get him down, didn't it? Inside the 40 at the 38-yard line. Pickup of 12. Van over the sophomore from Tallahassee who has had some outstanding punt returns himself. Well, he's just a great athlete. 215 pounds with the speed that Tamara has and, and the elusiveness and the, just the desire not to go down as evidenced on that play. Canel finds Van over again. This could be a game where Tamaric, simply because of the change at quarterback, might be more readily in the mind of a Danny Cannell. I tell you what, it, it almost seems like Brad Scott has said, okay, well, for these couple of plays, we're going to work on this guy. These couple of plays, we're going to get this guy going. I mean, he, they've done that all year. They just spread it out so well. We're going to get a stop and play here as they'll measure to see if it's a first down. But that quartet... They've got them being called the Fab Four down in uh, Tallahassee. But they do such a good job of reading defenses to get open to help their quarterbacks, whether it's Charlie Ward or Danny Cannell or even a John Stark. The other thing I think, and maybe the more impressive thing, all four of those guys, Fryer, Vanover, McCorvey, and Knox, are maybe even better after they catch the ball than just getting open and making the reception. Canel, 13 of 15, two touchdowns already. They go back into the eye. Mark Dunn dots it and takes it. And takes it outside, and were it not for losing his balance, may have gone for big yardage. Al Wallace there to make certain he went no further. The freshman from Delray Beach, Florida. Watch the elusiveness and the balance of Warwick Dunn. See, he just never gives you much to tackle. And Al Wallace was just able to get the, the foot and trip him up. Otherwise, Dunn had the corner, and who knows what would happen then. There's what he did last week. And it was a lot against Wake Forest in that 54-to-nothing shellacking that the Demon Deacons endured. Pennell with a wide-open fly. just could not keep up and Fryer even able to make the adjustment over the other shoulder to make the catch for the touch. 
this is what that fast break offense does to you. Mike Settles is an outside linebacker trying to cover a wide receiver playing in the slot. Fryer runs a post corner move. Very difficult to cover that pattern down in the scoring zone right up over the top and Fryer gets the touchdown. The extra point is good. Danny Canella in that drive. Four for four. 50 yards. Up to 14 for 16 on the day. 7.28 remaining here in the first half. It's a 21 to 6 ball game. Florida State leading. And the announcers for today's game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Well, Danny Cannell has certainly been a capable replacement, more than capable replacement for Charlie Ward. The youngster out of Fort Lauderdale is a biology major and wants to be a doctor down the road, but he may have a professional baseball or football career to worry about first of all his dad is the team doctor for the miami dolphins i wonder if danny spent some summers uh, throwing the ball around with another danny by the name of marina you know we've touched on it before but i've never met three coaches of three primary sports that get along as well as mike martin pat kennedy and bobby bowden there you see the scoring drive seven plays 63 yards there was a time even in bobby bowden's days when football players never played baseball or basketball it just didn't happen. Stewart, a yard deep in his end zone. Out to the 24-yard line. Bentley getting the job done out of Aurora, Colorado. Well, he, one of the reasons he came to Florida State was because of the possibility of playing baseball. He, on his visit, when he saw Dick Hauser Stadium down there in Tallahassee, that was as big a push to wear the garnet and gold as anything else. Milenovic back in at quarterback for this series. Mark Mason, the superback, behind him. Scoops it up to the 32-yard line complete. Andrew Carter on the receiving end. Redshirt freshman from Stockton, California. Good play fake. And then the bootleg action. Good job by Eric Greenstein again to seal the corner and enable Milanovic to turn and have lots of time to find Andrew Carter. The Butler, Pennsylvania. Been a few pretty good quarterbacks in that area. You betcha. Carter up at the top of your screen on second and two. Alan Williams back in the game. Not much there, if anything at all. Todd Rebol made the tackle. Now you look at the Maryland offense and you say, well, they've had their moments. But they've used big plays with Foley. With Milanovic, it's more of a control passing game. You have to get yardage on first down with this offense. Well, there is no doubt about that. I mean, you talk to, to offensive coordinators, and, and that was a conversation you and I had on a number of occasions during last week's game with Georgia Tech and Duke that we worked together, Tim. More and more coaches talk about first down efficiency. As, as the college football offenses evolve, how effective you are on first down really dictates how well you're going to play a football game. When you're getting five, six yards on first down, you're going to be a heck of an offense. Our Stat King Supreme, Marty Aronoff, comes up with uh, another good point off of that fact. Today, Maryland's Mark Duffner's team, 46 yards on the ground, 120 in the air, 166 total, but on first down, they're only averaging three yards per every first down attempt. Now on third and short, they go with the dive. Don't know if Williams was able to pick it up. It appears as if Milanovic is confident with the mark that he received. Little uh, vertical leap there by Mr. Williams to get up and over the pile. I guess that's why they do that when they have testing day. You know, get your vertical leap go. along with your 40 time. Here we go. Here we go. Good crowd on hand today here at Bird Stadium. 
score in this possession, but use as much of the remaining six and a half minutes as they can. Walt Williams is coming to the game at a wideout spot. There it is. Williams again. First down, Maryland. Same play with Milanovic in the game. It was mostly Williams with the counter that was able to pick up a great deal of yardage. And I, I'm sure those Maryland coaches are saying, well, how smart were we to put this kid in, in a defensive backfield at the beginning of the year? But Allen Williams with an opportunity to play due to some injuries at the super back position. I like this youngster's elusiveness and his ability to stay on his feet despite not being all that big. First and 10 for Maryland at the 47-yard line of Florida State. to Andrew Carter again at the 41-yard line. Richard Coe's made the stop, and this drive does mirror the first drive that was successful for Maryland back in the first quarter, but they came up empty. And it shows you that if you have a little bit of success running the football, then you can run play action against even Florida State and be successful. Second down and five for the Terrapins. use defense crossed up with little Allen Williams in the game and you know that the folks in South Bend are working feverishly on counteraction to be ready for next week because the countering and the trapping have gone very well good block there by John Teeter the redshirt sophomore number 76 to open the hole up for Williams for another first down against Florida State with this counteraction. Running to Florida State's right, Maryland's left, Jamie Bragg, the center, and Eric Greenstein, the left guard, have done a fine job. Jamie Bragg, number 77, the center, and 69, Greenstein. That's just a seal block, and Dave Hack came around as the trapper and did a nice trap block on McIntosh. Good triple team, actually, by Greenstein, Jamie Bragg and Ingram, and then the trap block by Dave Hatt. Second and six from the 24. Milanovic gets away from trouble, finds Walt Williams. Another first down for Maryland. A rather resourceful play by Scott Milanovic that time. A little bit of improvisation against the blitz as Florida State puts the pressure on. Chris Coward goes by, and Milanovic steps up, and Walt Williams, not afraid to make that fully extended catch over the middle. Receivers, I, I can speak from experience, hate to put their hands above their head over the middle of the field, but good play there by Walt Williams. Milanovic's number is picking up. Williams this time going off the opposite side, going to... The right side of his offensive front, Hack and Teeter over there, picking up at least three yards. Ken Alexander making the tackle. There's Jamie Bragg, the junior out of Severn Park, Maryland. 6'1", 270 pounds. That's that fire plug type you like at center. I mean, here, here's a kid. You can see over him without any problem, but the defense has a little bit of difficulty. They've got to make a, a wide-angle turn to get around that young man. Is getting all he wants so far out of this drive. He'd like to pick up six. Seminole one. Seminole one is the call. Milanovic in trouble again. Touchdown! Jeroy Simon. I'll tell you what, he was as close to being over the line of scrimmage as you could be. 
just got rid of it in time, and Jeroy Simon, a true freshman out of Johnstown, Pennsylvania, makes this a football game in College Park. You saw the line of scrimmage, the 10-yard line. Watch Milanovic roll to his right, steps up, and boom, he was about a half yard shy of going over the line of scrimmage. The Maryland fans are unhappy that they're kicking the extra point. with the hold. This one's good. A standing O from the Maryland Terrapin faithful as Florida State's lead shrinks to eight. So Scott Milenovic comes out of the bullpen after starting the game and the true freshman brings Maryland to within eight of number one FSU. Could they be looking ahead? Stay tuned. ACC football is brought to you today in part by your local Toyota dealers. I love what you do for me, Toyota. And by Siemens for leading edge technologies in electronic and electrical engineering depend on Siemens precision thinking. Tim Brando, Jack Corrigan, happy to be with you today and the Terrapin fans happy to be here. A near capacity crowd enjoying their Terrapins dominate from an offensive standpoint this Florida State defense that has been coolly trying to guard this team on the defensive end. The all the park is on the Florida State side. Maryland saying, hey, it's not that cold. It's the up back again. Omar Ellison has stopped as they utilize the pooch kick yet again. Raphael Wall made the tackle for Maryland. There you see the scoring drive. Tim plays 76 yards. Jack. The last two series for Florida State have resulted in touchdown the last three for Florida State, the last two for Maryland. We've had five touchdowns in each of the last five possessions in this game. You don't want to get into a scoring battle with Florida State, but that's Maryland's only hope to win it. If you can control the clock in doing so, you extend your chances. Maryland with 233 total yards, Florida State 200. from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, from Susquehanna. Another true freshman in the football game for Mark Duffner. He was their player of the week defensively in the effort against Clemson last Saturday. 6'3", 260 pounds. Only the third incompletion of the day for Danny Cannell. Finally hauling down near midfield. Radcliffe Thomas, the freshman from Woodbridge, Virginia, made the stop, and we've got an injured Maryland Terrapin. Raphael Wall is the injured Terrapin. Good flight concept again by Brad Scott. They, they ran a crossing route, and the cornerback ran with Tam, Tamarek Van Over, who was cutting across the field, and there was no deep help. And that enabled... Florida State to kick the ball out to nearly the 50-yard line as they tend to an injured Raphael Wall. I mentioned earlier, Tim, about how Maryland didn't want to score too quickly. Raphael Wall, that's where he got the whack from his own man, Radcliffe Thomas. As he made the contact, making the tackle, he got the worst of it from his teammate helping to finish it off. McCorvey, good size, going to take some... Uh, punishment himself but wall got the worst of that one they're very concerned you can tell right now with respect to movement as they tend to him we'll look at some scores miami over pit 28 to nothing big upset in the boston area chestnut hill as glenn foley and the eagles have the advantage on virginia tech in the second quarter and how about this one wow north carolina state coming into this game thinking about being the number three team out of the ACC's four within the coalition going to a relatively big bowl. And uh, Georgia Tech leading Baylor, and of course, uh, Chuck Reedy's Baylor Bears coming into that game realizing they must win to help secure the Southwest Conference. They're three teams within the coalition, and K 
kids. Now you've got to get uh, approval before you call this 900 number and dial the right number, 1-900-267-5757 for the latest scores. And Herb Hartnett, the fine sports information director here at Maryland, wanted us to make sure that we also kept people up to date on Penn is leading Princeton 7 to nothing in the Battle of the Ivy League unbeaten. We may have to call the Psychic Friends Network for that, for that information. <laughs> Angel Guerrero is coming to the game to replace Rafael Wall, who thankfully appeared to be in decent shape as he headed to the sidelines. Pinnell incomplete. And Tamarik Vanover is going to be hurt because... Remember what I talked about a little while ago? Wide receivers do not like to have to extend over the middle. That's what happens. Vanover was knocked down by Orlando Strozier as he went high in the air for that pass. And Florida State would really be hurt if Vanover had something seriously go wrong. But fortunately, he's okay. Andre Cooper is coming to the game. Kevin Knox, who has a touchdown reception already this afternoon, the recipient of that 17-yard arrow. Boy, they, they do such a great coordinated effort. Fryer moved one way from the inside to the outside, moved, settles the linebacker towards him. That opened up the curl route for Kevin Knox, and it's another Seminole first down. Still plenty of time left with this offense with 1.45 to go in the first half. Sean Jackson. That's the difference really between Jackson and Warwick Dunn. Dunn handles those cuts even on this terrain a bit better than Jackson. He's more of a power back. Florida State going to take a timeout here with 1.24 to play in the first half and you can see our menu for halftime. We'll take a look at the best of the ACC as we move into the month of November. One for the books coming up as well as more scores, highlights of the first half, and our ACC Player of the Week. I'd like to touch on Bobby Bowden's feelings right now because, granted, Charlie Ward's not playing. That's a, that's a decision that he made. He had his options coming in. Pennell obviously has been up to the task, near perfect today, but his defense has to be shrugging its shoulders at this point given the fact that they have relinquished so much yardage on the ground to this Maryland team that is known more for its passing game. I think right there is the key point, Tim, on the ground. Because when you look ahead to next week as the emotional Mark Duffner keeps his troops going strongly here in this first half to get back to the Florida State situation, should they ha handle this game and win and then they deal with, with the Notre Dame game finally next week, you know Notre Dame's going to run the ball and try and run the ball as much as they can. And so Florida State has to be concerned about the, uh, their inability to stop the option and the, or the uh, counters and the traps here in the first half. As we mentioned, near perfect, 17 of 21, 190 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions for Danny Canale, the sophomore from Fort Lauderdale. Canale, over to McCorvey. There's McCorvey. To the 17-yard line, clock ticking with 1.15, and they'll move the change and stop it. Andreel Johnson made the stop. Andreel Johnson, big day for him. He's a true freshman from Pahokee, Florida, out of the Palm Beach area, getting his chance at one of the state schools. Canal, incomplete, thrown underneath Fryer that time. Lamont Gore made the attempt at the pick number 24 for maryland lamont gore actually bumped into fryer going by good no call by the officials and if anything the bump denied gore a shot at making the interception watch the very end of the play here as cannell lets it go you see just the, the contact there the incidental contact between the two was enough to knock gore off stride and he ended up just a little shy Fryer's in the slot. Corby's got a favorite target in this situation, and he's got it again. But could not get away from Angel Guerrero. Guerrero, the junior, 
making the stop who just came in moments ago for the injured Raphael Wall. Florida State will use their second timeout. Defensive coaches talk about making plays in space. That's what they're talking about right there. You see all the wide open space around the receiver there. Sometimes you just ask a defensive player like Guerrero there, hey, you've got to make a tackle. You've got to break down, be under control, and not let that guy slip away. And Angel Guerrero with a good play there. Sets up uh, maybe the first interesting third down call of the first half for Bobby Bowden. Bobby Bowden in the past year has given up the responsibilities of coaching and calling plays during the course of the game. Brad Scott taking over those duties and uh, at times Bobby said, you know, I'd really like to give up those headphones, <laughs> but I just can't do it. Coming up next week, Virginia and Clemson for many of you, but we have other options. Maryland against NC State or Georgia Tech and Wake Forest. All very meaningful games, particularly for those looking for a postseason within the ACC. Check your local listings. The game will begin at 12 Eastern time. Nobody has been clowning around in this one. It has been a very exciting first half for the crowd here at Bird Stadium. And the big third down play here for Florida State. No turnovers in this game. Very fast paced, quickly played on the offensive end. 36, big down for the Maryland defense. Canal shoots it to Fryer, incomplete. Not much there, and that's really the first time that we've noticed Canal giving it up perhaps too quickly. Well, Maryland did a good job, good, good disguising that time. Larry Slade, the defensive coordinator, along with Mark Duffner, good job of disguising the blitz. They showed blitz in two or three different packages and then backed off. Mark Duffner saying call timeout if, yeah, now he's going to get the timeout from his Maryland defense. I think he wants to make sure that there is not a fake and they get caught into it. But what they did to Danny Cannell on that previous play, Tim, was that they showed blitz from two or three different spots lots of action before the snap of the ball and then backed everybody off with the exception of Jaime Flores running a little loop stunt and Cannell just throwing it to somebody and, and had Fryer even caught the ball he still was shy of the first down. Something worth mentioning now relative to Bobby Bowden the fact that Charlie Ward is not playing today they're not in that fast break as much they've been a bit more conventional and Cannell has been outstanding but you'd have to wonder if uh, Bowden, with his gambling reputation, would even consider doing anything outside the norm, recognizing that Notre Dame has all prepared and a good look via the satellite at today's game. Well, that's, that's a, a factor, and you want to make sure the confidence for this young man continues to grow, Scott Bentley. Yeah, they may need him both today and next week, and he missed it. That doesn't help. That's the Achilles heel of Florida State. If they don't win the national championship this year, given the personnel that they have on both sides of the line of scrimmage, whether you talk of their tough schedule or not, it's their kicking game that's still a problem. There's where Bobby is on the all-time list as a chance this year to pass the legendary Woody Hayes with four more victories. But number 236 is coming a lot tougher than most people thought with the way Maryland has played in this first half. Let's see if they just sit on the ball or they go for broke. You're one in seven. You might want to go for broke. Williams, nothing doing. And we've got a marker down. Coming after the tackle. I'm bringing up that point about Holtz and Bowden and the decisions that are made because you know that that had to be in his in his thinking as he made the decision whether to go with Charlie Ward or Danny Cannell today. Well, you, you, you're with exactly right. And it's not just the Notre Dame game next week. Uh, certainly that's the one everybody's talking about because the Irish are number two and Florida State is number one. But as we showed you their remaining schedule right at the beginning of our telecast, the following week they're home at Tallahassee against NC State and granted NC State's being upset today but they're number 22 and then they go down and play Florida in the swamp in the swamp and Florida is number nine this week 
penalty was against Maryland. And we have whistles blowing prior to the snap. Maryland fans are a little disappointed, but Mark Duffner was smart. Going to the locker room down just a touchdown. This is a great boost for your young football team. No question about it. Listen to this crowd. Fills a near capacity today at renovated Bird Stadium. Applauding their Terrapins. One in seven, one in four in the ACC. And they have put forth an outstanding offensive effort against the best team in the country. And the Florida State coaching staff has a lot of work to do at halftime trying to figure out how to slow down the Maryland uh, counter game and trapping game and how to make sure that their offense continues to roll effectively in the second half. It's going to be a, a fun final 30. Yeah, I'll be interested to see if we see Kevin Foley come in at any point. Remember, the second string quarterback had his moments for Maryland as well in the opening half. Halftime festivities coming up from Maryland. ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon and its dealers and distributors who invite you to try high-performance Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. By BC Powder. No matter where you're hurt, nothing works faster than BC. Use only as directed. By Lowe's Home Improvement Center, helping to add value to your home. By Pizza Hut, home of the Bigfoot Pizza. By your Southeastern Dairy Farmers and Milk. It does a body good. And by your Carolina Chrysler Plymouth dealer. See your local Carolina Chrysler Plymouth dealer today. Florida State with a 21 to 13 lead, but I think you can tell by that score that the story of this game is Maryland's offense once again moving well against Florida State. Tim Brando along with Jack Corgan. We pointed out that the last two teams that have come up with more than 400 yards in total offense against FSU, the Maryland Terrapins in their last two opportunities, and today, they're well on their way to getting that and more. They're doing a, an outstanding job of, of being effective with both young quarterbacks, Milanovic and Foley. Danny Cannell has played well for Florida State, but unable to come up with points, and Scott Bentley missing the field goal is an emotional downer for the Seminoles as they go into the locker room at halftime. All right, we have a lot to talk about with respect to what's going on in the ACC. How about the Shoney's ACC Player of the Week? We've got him for you now. Our Shoney's ACC Player of the Week is Clemson tailback Derek Witherspoon. The senior from Sumter, South Carolina, had 19 carries for 173 yards and two touchdowns last week against Maryland. This, his longest run of 89 yards in the fourth quarter, helped Clemson to a 19-0 lead en route to a 29-0 shutout against the Turks. Derek Witherspoon, our Shoney's ACC Player of the Week. We're going to take a look at the standings within the ACC and show you the significance of what's going on in the Carolinas today because North Carolina State at 6-2 and 3-2 and and overall would love to be in there with Clemson and Virginia for that coalition spot. The top four teams go to coalition bowls within the ACC. Duke at last report was up 21 to nothing in Durham. Big surprise there. North Carolina getting back into action and you've got uh, Virginia and Clemson. All, like you said, you want to be in as good a bowl as you can be in in the conference and that means victories over teams you're expected to beat and that would be a huge upset for Duke of course the emotional boost of the announcement that Barry Wilson is resigning at the end of the season obviously paying some dividends at least in the first half for Duke but keep in mind that's the cardiac pack and they do a pretty good job of coming back you know, we have had some great plays this week. Each week we highlight a play of the week from the ACC. Here's what happened a week ago. A look at the Pizza Hut. Bigfoot ACC Play of the Week. In the muck and the mire of Wallace Wade Stadium at Duke, Georgia Tech quarterback Donnie Davis hits Charlie Simmons on a quick slant, and Simmons finds an extra gear, 72 yards for a touchdown. It was a big day for Simmons and for Tech in a 47-14 route of the Blue Devils. That's our ACC Pizza Hut Play of the Week. We're at Bird Stadium in Maryland, where the Terrapins trail the Seminoles by a score of 21-13. to 13. A very entertaining first half, and in just a few moments, we'll be back with more of our halftime festivities from Bird Stadium as the Seminoles try to hang tough against the nation's number one team. It has been a very eventful first half offensively for both teams. In fact, at one point, five straight possessions, five straight touchdowns for both teams. 
Danny Cannell, 17 of 21 in the game, and he has three touchdown passes, and he's uh, shared the wealth to Knox, Fryer, and McCorvey. Foley came into the game to pitch some relief for Scott Milanovic. He got a touchdown as well, and Milanovic, his touchdown pass was a big one as well to pull this game to within eight. Back here at College Park where we've had nearly 500 yards of offense already in this one, so that means it's time to take a look at some of the statistical leaders in the Atlantic Coast Conference as we move into November. As we look at this week's Pepsi Best of the ACC, there are some interesting races. Simeon Willis is now ninth in the country in passing efficiency and has regained the lead in the conference over Charlie Ward of Florida State. Curtis Johnson has led in rushing all year long as he nears 1,000 yards on the season for the Tar Heels. In receiving yardage, Jermaine Lewis of Maryland may not reach his goal of 1,000 yards, but what a season the first-year player has had. In terms of tackles, Brad Sherrod is over the century mark for Duke. James Walker of NC State is close in the chase for the tackle total. 21 to 13, our score here at halftime at College Park, Maryland. We'll be back with more halftime activities after this word from your local station. It's time now for the Jefferson Pilot scoreboard. Jefferson Pilot, the vision to power your dreams. As we take a look at scores from other games, Miami leading Pittsburgh 28 to nothing in the second quarter. Mild upset, maybe more than mild in Chestnut Hill. Boston College 28 to 14 at the intermission. This one's not mild. Duke looked very poor last week against Georgia Tech, and Barry Wilson's announcement had to have had an impact against the Wolfpack of Michael King. Well, the cardiac pack is really going to have to rally in the second half. Elsewhere, in terms of college football action, Florida with the early advantage at home. Wake Forest, surprisingly, in the second quarter at Charlottesville with the advantage over number 21, Virginia. And Georgia Tech still with a shot at finishing above 500 has the early advantage on base. That is a very meaningful game for Georgia Tech. They'd like to have a winning season. They do have a 1AA victory, so they're not eligible for a bowl game. But in the Southwest Conference, they may only have one team eligible for a bowl play at the end of the year, and that would be Texas A&M. Well, we've got one bowl team for sure here with Florida State this afternoon. And as we take a look at our Ford halftime stats, you can see that both teams have been effective moving the football nearly 500 yards of offense. And maybe the, the biggest factor, two, the bottom two categories, Maryland with nearly eight and a half minutes advantage in time of possession, and neither team making a turnover in the first half. Outstanding play, particularly from an offensive standpoint. Can't find fault with Danny Cannell's play. Danny Cannell with three touchdown passes. We had five straight possessions ending up in touchdowns. You saw the touchdown to McCorvey, and there's one to Kevin Knox. Then Kevin Foley came off the bench, made the long touchdown pass to Mansell Johnson. They eventually got it down where they snuck it over. That made it 14 to six, but Cannell was able to answer right back for Florida State. As he did, he did it with the drop back rather than the rollout, and a nice adjustment in midair by Fryer for the touchdown. But I loved what Milanovic did. After being on the pine and sensing what the Florida State defense was about, this was a very resourceful strike. Was able to improvise and find Jeroy Simon in the end zone. It's a 21-13 ball game, and certainly that Florida State football team right now very concerned about this game heck with next yeah. week in south bend they're worried about college park alan williams had a field day running the football against bobby bowden's defense the counter trap it has been there all day for the terrapins back with the second half in a moment jefferson pilot sports exclusive coverage of the exxon ncc game of the week is brought to you by Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. For high performance, rely on the Tiger. By Lee Apparel. With regular relaxed and loose fit jeans, Lee is the brand that fits. By Pepsi. Be young. Have fun. Drink Pepsi. By Shoney's Breakfast Bar. The best breakfast in town. By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. The vision to power your dreams. And by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a thorough test drive, simply phone your nearest BMW dealer. We welcome you back to College Park, Maryland. And if things get much closer, all of college football will be very watchful of what's happening. The proceedings that we've already witnessed 30 minutes of. Seminoles with an eight-point lead. But the mere fact that Maryland is here is news. Well... 
add one more element to it. Florida State had not allowed a touchdown in the second quarter this year. They give up two second quarter touchdowns to Maryland. A reminder, Navy had the lead at halftime against Notre Dame last week, and you did find out the end result of that game. Milligan with another pooch. Fryer in position. The good hands people up around the 23, and Fryer has room. Nice adjustment by Bobby Bowden. Fryer down the sideline. He stays in bounds. Now they're going to rule him out around the 40-yard line. Now that was a great adjustment by bringing Fryer up to the up-back position, a guy that can do something with the ball after he catches it. He had not been there in the first half. Fryer got a good wall using William Floyd as his escort up the sidelines and right there stepped out of bounds on the Florida State 44-yard line. Now the old coach is thinking. He knows they're not going to kick it deep, so Get one of your good receivers up there to catch that pooch kick. First and 10 for Danny Cannell, already uh, career highs for him after one half. Floyd. William Floyd gets it up to the 49 right now. Ratcliffe Thomas made the stop. Floyd, the 6-foot, 245-pound junior from St. Petersburg, Florida, has four touchdowns this year. He is the power back within this Florida State offense. Good seal block by Juan Laureano, the left tackle on Mark Sturdivant at the end to get Floyd around the corner. Second and five. Now to McCorvey. Kez McCorvey has been his favorite intermediate receiver today. Cleveland Everhart made the stop. Transfer from Northeast Oklahoma A&M, a very powerful program. Highland Park, Michigan, his home. He's a junior. McCorby has eight receptions today for 92 yards. Third down and one. Get a Maryland player down, Tim. Maybe. It is Everhart. Yeah. He's had problems injury-wise over the last couple of weeks. They like to get him in the game because he's a lot quicker than Mike Settles uh, settles a, a transfer from Lock Haven State, a Division II school, uh, Everhart with 4-6 speed. You like to see that in that outside linebacker spot, particularly against that spread offense of Florida State. But the injuries uh, rear their ugly head again for Maryland. That really is the difference for Mark Duffner. Now, he knew coming in after taking over for Joe Krivak, there would be some difficult years. And probably they would come later rather than earlier, given the fact that he had some experienced personnel to work with last season. He had less experience this year. Add to that, the more talented players were injured. And again, for those of you that just joined us, his top receiver and the leading receiver in this league, Jermaine Lewis, not available for this football game. And it has been more of the same on each side of the line of scrimmage for Duffner. But all you have to do is be around Mark Duffner for about five minutes, and you can't help but get involved in the infectious enthusiasm that he brings to whatever he does. And the glory days of Maryland football, a lot of people here in College Park believe are not that far away again. His facilities have improved. His recruiting should improve along with it. Third and a yard. Floyd, the first back through. Inside the 40, down to the 38-yard line. Angel Guerrero making the stop and we get another Maryland player hobbling off Tim Brown as you watch William Floyd get through the crease and nearly go for a big yardage before Angel Guerra was able to make the stop there's Tim Brown a good young sophomore linebacker who's got an ankle or a knee problem out of Fort Union military first and ten Canal plenty of time deep out, out of bounds at the 15-yard line. That's a 23-yard pickup. Danny Cannell given much time, and Charlie Ward obviously used to that stat as well. Well, when you run this spread offense, if you have a, a gifted route runner like a Matt Fryer, you could take that inside receiver, the slot receiver, and run deep out routes, deep corner routes, and he's going to get open because he makes the good fake Fryer with his fourth catch of the afternoon on that one. Jackson. That's 
should be and is a touchdown. Eric Wood just not quick enough to get over and make the stop of Jackson. And we've got a marker down in the end zone, a celebration flag coming against Florida State. Right on the button with your analysis there, Tim, you've got Sean Jackson is just the better athlete than Eric Wood. I mean, Eric Wood tries to make the play, but Jackson's just faster than he is and produces another score for the Seminoles. And he can L four touchdown passes, this one measuring 15 yards. And the first war chant that we've heard in Bird Stadium today. Pretty uh, good contingent of Florida State fans who made the trip up today. Notice the precision with their chop versus the Atlanta Braves chop. In Tallahassee, they're very aware of that chop. They have to be a bit more precise with the Florida State chop. Another piece of information about pomp and pageantry that perhaps you have not yet heard. I'll take that, I'll take that home with me for sure. <laughs> Little something to think about. 28 to 13, Florida State with the lead early in the third quarter. Mark Dubner urging on his troops during the timeout. Wants them to do a better job of controlling this game so that his offense has a chance not only of scoring but keeping his team in the game. Right now they're two scores down and if you stay in a scoring fest, that won't help you very much if you can't stop the opposition. When you're from Tallahassee, upper 40s are extremely cold. Charlie Ward can't get enough pieces of clothing on him. The celebration penalty of the end zone after the touchdown, the reason why they're kicking off back at the 20. And a pretty good return for Jermaine Stewart. And that gives Maryland quality field position to open this drive beyond the 45-yard line. Let's watch and see the adjustments made by the Florida State defense to try and handle the effective ground game in the first two quarters of Maryland. Scott Milanovic out for one series in this game. Seven of 10 for 64 yards and a touchdown. No turnovers this afternoon for either team. Williams, that's the same play. It has been the setup play all afternoon for the Maryland attack. Just a little fold that time by Dave Hack, the right guard, as he lines up on the right side and loops around the center, Jamie Bragg, up the, the three hole, if you will, in most football terminology between uh, center and guard or on that left side. And look at the numbers for Alan Williams, a very effective day for the freshman. He is the lone setback on second and five. Quick drop. Milanovic to Williams. Walt Williams will score. Here we go, baby. the good baton exchange on the handoff to this relay today. Wow. That is the most points allowed by Florida State this year. We still have 12 and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Snap was high, but Milliken's boot is good. Folks, this is a defense that's pitched four shutouts in the ACC. Just a deep post route, good protection, right on the button by Milanovic. I don't know if there was a bust in coverage or what. Corey Sawyer was all by himself, and Walt Williams just ran away from him. There was no center field help. There it was. I don't know if we can see it. Devin Bush stepped up. The strong safety stepped up number 11. We'll try and show that to you one more time, perhaps to see what happened to the deep middle coverage, whatever. Walt Williams, the redshirt freshman from Miami, Florida. Killian High School. Miami Killian. Watch number 11, Devin Bush, as we recycle this play for you. He'll be on the right side of your screen there. Got caught upfield because of the crossing man. Did not anticipate the deep ball. 
good concept, good execution, good football game. Two plays, 55 yards, 51 seconds off the clock. Now it'll be interesting to see if Dubner's pep talk to his defense can give them a stop because then Maryland can say to themselves, hey, we may hang around the rest of the way. And that's the last thing Bobby Bowden wants to see. This is the most fun in 93 that the Terrapins and their fans have had here in Bird Stadium. Watch for the pooch kick again from Milligan. High coming to Fryer again. He does have room down the sidelines, but quickly converging for Maryland, number 37, Kevin Frank, reserve linebacker from Kensington, Maryland, to make the tackle. And they're juiced. They still have not been able to stop Florida State this ball game on defense, Florida State, since the first possession. They had to punt the very first time they had the football, but then the only other time that Florida State has not scored is when Bentley missed the short field goal late in the second quarter. Cannell has been phenomenal, and he's going to need to continue to be that way because Maryland's offense is not going away. Jackson is the eye back. He takes off across the right side as the first down with ease to the 40-yard line. It's not like you want to slow yourself down and get away from doing the things you've done so well, but you almost anticipate Florida State wanting to run the ball for a while here, Tim, just to take some time off the clock and, and dull the enthusiasm of this Maryland team. See, they again shift into their eye formation. Second straight play. I don't think we've seen that today. Jackson again, this time the left side. Play was strung out nicely by Johnny Hicks. And do we have another injured Terrapin? I believe we do. That's uh, Hicks who's slow to get up. At the 44-yard line, that's their top down lineman. True freshman from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. More and more Terrapins going down to injuries. Some of them just... Not particularly the type of injury, not the, not the kind of injuries that can cost you an entire game, but just slow you down a step or two. And against Florida State, you don't want to have that happen. Spend New Year's Eve at the Outback Steakhouse Skater Bowl in Jackson, Florida. Send a postcard with your name, address, and telephone number to the address on the screen and register to win a trip for two, including game tickets, hotel, and airfare. The winner will be announced during the ACC Game of the Week on November 20th. He must be 21 years of age or older to enter. Second down and five for Florida State. Canal complete to McCorvey. At midfield, near the first down, Radcliffe Thomas knocked him down. They blitzed Mike Settles, and Canal does a great job of making the read and stepping up. Watch the catch by McCorvey as well. Nice little one-handed grab there by Kez McCorvey. Ratcliffe Thomas around the action and Andreel Johnson with a pretty good pop that's knocked McCorvey backwards and might have denied him the first down, although it's going to be close. Kez McCorvey, not a bad day. Nine receptions, including a touchdown. All these numbers are going to pile up throughout the course of the day. Many, many receivers will have career afternoons before this day is done. The trump card to this game, you can see they're a little short, and it will be third down and less than a foot, is when will we see the turnover and who might commit it? You're right. I mean, it, with all the action we've had, with all the passing and all the offensive numbers, up around 600 yards combined for the two teams, still no turnovers. We've had a few fumbles, but the teams have been able to recover them themselves. Third and inches. Jackson, the eye back, Floyd, the up back. First back through, Floyd has the first down. Negotiates to the 45-yard line of Maryland, Radcliffe Thomas, again in on the pile. We've called his number often today. 
Even though he's not a senior, you talk to most people associated with the Florida State program, they'll tell you that William Floyd is the team leader, the emotional leader, the vocal leader. Charlie Ward might be the leader, but Charlie's a quiet guy. William Floyd's the guy that makes the noise for that offense. Sometimes a little too much so when he got the penalty early in the game. Six, seven yards with a clip. The Maryland defensive front just unable to lock up with the Florida State offensive front and get anything accomplished. Well, on this drive, just the one pass to McCorvey. Otherwise, they've been banging it on the ground. Good lead block by William Floyd. You see how he stood up Tim Brown and drove him back before Brown was able to help Thomas on the tackle. 10-22 remaining. We've already had 650 yards of total offense in this game for both teams. Floyd on second and three burrows near the 35. Again, it should be a third and sh short situation for Florida State. Boy, they've got in that lineup, they get some kind of bootleg action and look for Fryer deep in the corner. They've got a chance to, to make a big play because Orlando Strozier was out on the island all by himself against Fryer. But they don't necessarily need to run it on third and short here. Six of eight on third down and conversions, and they've had third and short most of the afternoon. Keep it on the ground. Jackson. Pretty good read defensively by Maryland. Raphael Wall back into the game, made the read, but still was unable to stop Jackson from picking up the first down as his power and strength was the key there because Wall had him wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. First down and 10 for Florida State. 28 to 20, Seminoles with a lead. Just over nine minutes to play, third quarter. Play action fake by Canal, and he looks for his man. He's got it. Knox, touchdown. What a great ball. I mean, what a great throw. Orlando Strozier had good coverage on Kevin Knox. I mean, that ball was perfectly thrown by Danny Canal. That was just as fine a job as you'd want to do. Look where Knox catches this ball in full stride. Look at Strozier right on the hip. I mean, that's good coverage. But how do you cover a perfectly thrown ball? That was outstanding. Bentley's point after is good. Bobby Bowden, perhaps concerned that his defense has decided to take the week off as a backup pitcher in the bullpen that is happy to be towing the rubber today. Five touchdown tosses for Danny Cannell and a 15-point lead over the Terrapins. Back after this word from your local station. Obviously, there's not much you can tell him. He's done pretty well. 24-31 for 292 yards, five touchdowns, and since the punt off the first series, Florida State Jack Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. Miss field goal, touchdown, touchdown. Five for six. That's pretty productive without a Heisman Trophy candidate in the lineup. Williams. Alan Williams has been the workhorse offensively on the ground as well as on special teams. Gets it out to the 20-yard line, and that's where Maryland will start first and 10. Byron Capers made the tackle for Florida State. Well, Florida State did not punt in the game at Tallahassee against Maryland last year, and after that 72-yard eight-play touchdown drive, as Tim said, they've only done it once. They had 10 scoring drives last year. Trying to equal that today. They may want to punt before they play Notre Dame. They may need to practice that before next week's game. Milanovic in a quarterback. They mark it at the 18-yard line. First and 10. A swing pattern complete to Andre, Andrew Carter. Carter gets it out to the 24-yard line. The reason I say that about punting is because Liss has been injured. He's got a bad ankle. His left ankle, his plant ankle is gone, and they thought Dan Mowry would have to handle the chores this afternoon. First punt was not a great one by Mowry, who is a place kicker by trade. 
have been three punts in the game. Second and five. There it is again. And a trap. It's been there all afternoon. To the 31-yard line. Ball first down. Look at this score. Number five, Alabama, losing at home to LSU in the third quarter. LSU coming off an upset win against Ole Miss last week, so Curly Holman fighting to keep his job. Wake Forest still with the edge over number 21, Virginia, and Duke with that three-touchdown edge on number 23, NC State. Alabama's been winning ugly this year, but they've been winning. First and ten for Maryland. Play action, Faith Milanovic. Andrew Carter again. Derek Brooks knocked him out. 13-yard pickup, and uh, again, uh, Florida State not solving the counter trap on first down, leading to the, the pass on second. The play action, you can see all the Florida State men converge on the play fake that gives Milanovic room. Watch the ground covered by Derek Brooks. I mean, he was there in a hurry. Williams tries the left side this time. Derek Alexander wrapped him up at the 46-yard line. Well, the beat just goes on in Tallahassee. Marvin Jones leaves. Derek Brooks comes in. Uh, Charlie Ward uh, comes after Casey Weldon, who came after Peter Tom Willis. I mean, the skilled positions on offense and defense always there for the Seminoles. They only have 13 available scholarships this year during the recruiting season. Bowden anticipates 18 because he probably will lose five of them coming out early to the pro. That's how good they are there. They are deep. They've got a freshman, two freshmen, Sam Howard, an inside linebacker who's going to be outstanding. Second and eight. Not happy feet for the first time, but he finds the quick feet of Alan Williams. What a catch by Williams. Enzo Armella made the stop for Florida State. Well, Alan Williams has found a job. I tell you what, this freshman has been just the surprise of the day. Look at that catch. And only the effort of Enzo Armella kept it from being a bigger gain as Armella was able to come back and trip up Williams, but not before he lunged for another Maryland first down. The Terrapins keep moving the chains against this Florida State defense. the effort by the offensive front of Maryland. Again, that just a little bit of a loop by Dave Hack and John Teeter, the right guard and right tackle. Brooks is able to get a piece of him, but can't bring him down. It's the first time I think I've really seen Florida State miss the presence of John Nance, their veteran nose guard, who they hope to have back next week against Notre Dame. Spain has not played as well as Nance plays. And we'll see who, in fact, has it. Florida State indicating that they indeed have the football. Armella running out of there saying it's theirs. And Williams was absolutely hammered. Well, they were hoping with the bootleg action that they slipped that through this time, but it didn't happen. They still have now. They finally told us that I think Ken Alexander at the bottom of the pile. Yep, it's Ken Alexander, the senior out of Austin, Texas, who did the best job within the pile to fight the ball free. Yeah, they tried to run the bootleg action this time, and Enzo Armala with a good play. He was the one who stripped away the football. And Ken Alexander fighting with Jamie Bragg came up the winner in the tug of war for the first turnover of the afternoon. 35-20, 5-17 remaining in the third.
Bobby Bowden and his Florida State Seminoles leading 35 to 20, having claimed the first turnover by either team in our Exxon ACC game of the week. Mark Duffner on the other side, hoping that his defense can make a few plays to keep his team hanging on here in the second half. So far, Danny Cannell has owned the Terrapin defensive secondary. And there goes Warwick Dunn. Dunn to the 45 for a first down. This season, Exxon and the ACC are spotlighting football players who contribute their time and efforts to community service. This week's Exxon Community Spirit Award goes to Lonnie Johnson, a senior tight end for Florida State. Lonnie is one of FSU's top receivers, known for his great speed and athleticism. He has proven a three-year starter is always a threat to catch the deep ball. Exxon believes that he epitomizes the goals of community spirit and on behalf of Lonnie Johnson. Exxon is proud to donate $1,000 to the Exxon ACC Kids and College Program. Jackson wrapped up. Maryland sent more people as Clarence Williams. Actually, we have to call him Pooh Bear. Doesn't like Clarence. Doesn't like Clarence, and I can understand that. <laughs> it was he rather than Jackson that made that carry. Maryland stopped him that time for no gain. Who bears a little guy? Only goes about 245. He is going to be a big time power runner out of that fullback spot for Florida State. Freshman out of Crescent City, Florida. They do give him a yard, second and nine. Quick slant to McCorvey. It's been there all afternoon. McCorvey inside the 20 to the 17-yard line. Strozier and Lamont Gore giving chase. The move to McCorvey and Knox into the slot positions with their size and their ability to run with the football after they catch it have, have been the biggest dividend makers of this offense. We talked about Van Over not being as much of a factor this year. That's because... When you have the slot guys being covered by linebackers, it's just too good of a mismatch to pass up for the Florida State quarterbacks. Done. Now that's what he'll do so well. Bounce it outside and go for more. And he can still turn the corner once he does that. Stopped at the 13-yard line, Orlando Strozier made the tackle of the freshman from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Only 165, 170 pounds, but excellent leg drive. Watch this right here. Piles into the line, says nothing there. See you later with a little 360 spin. That move got Florida State an extra four yards. That looked like Dominique Wilkins in the lane. That's right. <laughs> like that power, the drop step, you know, power forward, isn't it? Timeout called by Maryland. Mark Duffner looking for some answers, perhaps divine guidance against this Florida State offense. But the key, the turnover, because that gives Florida State that opportunity to go up by three scores. And speaking of three, we've got three ACC games coming your way next week that you'll be able to see on many of these Jefferson Pilot Sports stations. Check your local listings. They begin at noon Eastern time. The Virginia Cavaliers. Coach Welsh takes on Clemson. Very big matchup where bowls are concerned. Maryland and North Carolina State or Georgia Tech and Wake. All of that coming your way next Saturday. Looking forward to that Virginia Clemson game next week because Death Valley has really been that kind of place for the Virginia Cavaliers. They have never been very uh, successful down there in Clemson and they're going to need a win against the Tigers if they want to finish in that second or third slot as far as the conference uh, coalition alignment. You look at what Clemson faces. Kenny Hatfield's tough games are still in front of him. Now, that win last week for him helps him a great deal in terms of being eligible for a bowl game, whether it's one of the coalition bowls or not. He plays uh, North Carolina tonight in Chapel Hill and then has Virginia next week, so back-to-back -back very difficult assignments for the Clemson Tigers. Second down and six, 319 remaining in the third quarter. Danny Cannell pitching in relief of the injured Charlie Ward. Given the week off because of those bruised ribs in preparation for Notre Dame. And this half, he's six of six for two touchdowns. Incomplete. 
Here comes the flag. A late flag, though, against Tamari Granover. I'm not going to debate the call. I think it was a good one. It just took a while. Well, sometimes you stuff that yellow hanky so deep in your pocket it takes you a while to dig it out. Orlando Strozier with the two-handed chuck on the eight and the zero on the back of the numbers. Watch from the right of your screen coming across to the middle. Tamaric Vanover with the bump and the pass interference, pass interference call puts the ball, ball be put in play on the 12-yard line. Ah, the 17-yard line, excuse me. That's why we're having the momentary pause in play. They're set on the sidelines, now they're set on the field. Gun to the five. Warwick Dunn, we touched on him earlier and told you of the human interest story that is Warwick Dunn. Much like Charlie Ward, a quiet leader, as a quarterback at Catholic High in Baton Rouge, his mother was a policeman and while on duty was murdered just four days prior to his visit to Florida State. Bobby Bowden took him in and Charlie Ward, whom you see there wrapped up, took him in as his roommate and they've become his second family. the first real pressure we've seen that Danny Cannell has had to deal with as he tried to get it to Knox. We have not had much in the way of quarterback sacking from either team, but good pressure from Ratcliffe Thomas, and then on the jump ball situation, the ball falls harmlessly incomplete. Maryland hoping to deny here decided to go ahead and put an end to this one as quickly as possible. Say what, it takes a lot of guts to call an end around on a third down play like that, but Bobby Bowden has always been an aggressive offensive coach and his staff just feeds off of that. And whoever made the suggestion, it was the correct one. Everybody going right. That fast, fast enough to put it in the end zone and put Florida State in control finally in this game with 2.13 to play in the third quarter. We had commented earlier that with the Notre Dame game waiting in the wings that perhaps Florida State may shelter their offensive scheme. They have been more basic today than in the past, but Bobby Bowden made the statement to me there have been those scribes in the past that have been critical of Bowden's conservative calls in critical games. He made a statement to me, he says, we can't run as many reverses against Miami. They're as fast as we are. <laughs> Champions on ice coming your way. Jefferson Violet Sports proud to present it to you tomorrow night at Independence Arena in Charlotte, North Carolina. Tickets may be purchased right now through Ticketmaster at 704-522-6500 or at the gate. Katarina Vitt, former gold medalist and others prepare for the upcoming Winter Olympics. Make your plans to be there. The only downer for Florida State today, I mean, they've got to be very pleased that Danny Cannell in the offense uh, has not missed that much despite the absence of the Heisman Trophy uh, leader, Charlie Ward. But certainly there has to be concern over the points allowed and how they have come about. Although Maryland has moved the ball against some good defenses this year, and today they've been better able to hang on to the ball until that uh, last turnover that Florida State turned into a score. And when you're playing a team as good as this when you can't afford one and uh, they may have 
tucked this one away with that touchdown to take a 22-point lead. Stewart at his eight. Oh. A flying Walinda from Jermaine Green to make that tackle. Major news in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. LSU leading 14 to nothing in the third. In Gainesville, more of the same at the Swamp. Nelson Stokely's team uh, went in there 6-2 and two from Southwest Louisiana, but Florida's different when they play at home for Steve Spurrier. And that's a surprise. Tell you what, Bill Mallory's done a wonderful job in Indiana to be tied. At half. They still have a shot at the Big Ten title. They have a shot at a very good goal, if not the Rose Bowl, given they win that one against Penn State. Kevin Foley has come back into the game at quarterback. He had one series today, and it led to a touchdown. He's up to the 24-yard line. We're back and check out some more scores elsewhere in college football. One of the really improving teams, Don Nalen's West Virginia Mountaineers, up big at halftime at Georgia Tech, making it tough on Baylor. Bill Lewis's team hoping to keep that roll going and have that shot at finishing above 500. There's the Jefferson Pilot scoreline number. Second down and four. Alexander and Knight combine on the stop. Are well, you talking about that LSU Alabama game? That ends any hope that the Sugar Bowl might have had of having a national championship game involving an unbeaten, once tied SEC champion against an either either Florida State or Notre Dame. That's how important that score was that we showed you between LSU and Alabama. Granted, there's still a lot of time left, but that's a that's a big number. Big, speaking of big numbers, that graphic a moment ago, Alan Williams, who until a couple of weeks ago was a defensive back for Mark Duffner with more yards on the ground against Florida State than anybody this year, and maybe more significantly, they came when the game was still on the line, not, not yards piled up in the fourth quarter against backup personnel. Maryland 109 yards rushing on the ground today. That is an amazing stat given the type of personnel on the defensive side of the ball for Florida State. Foley checking off at the line of scrimmage. Play clock down to five. Quick look in pattern complete to Mansell Johnson. And a freshman from Atlanta, Maryland. Gets it up to the 44-yard line, a pickup of 16. What confidence does? We saw Mansell Johnson drop two balls. Well, they were tough catches, but not be able to handle two balls in the end zone early in the game that might have given Maryland a score. Then he makes the touch, to, makes the long catch from Foley, and all of a sudden now this guy's got confidence. He's making catches, he's making moves, he's picking up yardage. Belief in oneself is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Yeah, you bet. And this is a game, regardless of the outcome, Maryland players will have an opportunity to say, hey, we were successful moving the ball against perhaps the best team in college football. So we on a busted play. Manages to get just beyond the original line of scrimmage near the 44-yard line. And uh, that should do it for the third quarter. Well, as Mark Duffner told us yesterday, Tim, that was the thing. They were looking to use this game to continue their progress to get themselves better for the rest of 93 and into the seasons to come. Mark Duffner knows where his program is and more importantly, where it's headed. Florida State apparently headed for Notre Dame unbeaten next week. Tim Brando, Jack Corrigan, happy to have you with us. Maryland fans enjoying it today. They have been well entertained. The game may be getting out of hand here in the fourth quarter as we open up, but certainly their offense has given them reason to stay in the stands here at Bird Stadium. Holy in at quarterback for Milanovic. And another nice play. But they've run that fold screen to the wide receiver, this time Jason Premis, about four times today, and it's been effective every time. It seems like 
Whenever Florida State has been in a blitz package, as you look at the league game summary, and with that play, we're up to about 800 yards of total offense between the two teams. See, it's the blitz package coming on, and boom, we've got the screen going. Good blocking out in front. Russell Weaver with a good block on Corey Sawyer to give Jason Kremis more room. Kremis, the senior from Northampton, Pennsylvania. Up to Kurtz at the 42. There by Alexander. Ken Alexander, right in William's face. Hello, and welcome to my world. High school All-American out of Austin, Texas, out of LBJ High School in Austin. Didn't didn't practice in the spring because of mono, and I think he uh, he made Alan Williams feel a little sick with that that big time hit. Second and thirteen. to Mansell Johnson again. Running away from Corey Sawyer for the first down. To the 25-yard line. That was an audio first down for Kevin Foley. By that I mean he never saw what happened to the rest of this play. He only heard the crowd's reaction. He gets it off before he is crushed. Todrick McIntosh nailed him. But a count too late as Johnson on the slant picks up another Maryland first down. And Kevin Foley has done a nice job as the number two guy today for Maryland. Johnson, three receptions for 102 yards today. As Williams goes off the left side down to the 24-yard line. Williams moving closer to that hundred yard mark now officially 91 carries on the afternoon or 91 yards on 24 carries marty Ironoff tells us most yards to date against this florida state defense on the ground donnell bennett 75 yards for miami that's how good williams has been against florida state today and a good concept offensively by maryland with the counties and the track Foley fortunate that that one hit the turf before landing on a waiting Seminole jersey's arm. Well, now referee threw a flag late like he'd have an ineligible man downfield because what Foley was trying to do was run that fold screen again, but the throw has to be behind the line of scrimmage for the offensive lineman to be downfield, and with the blitz by Alexander, Foley didn't have time to wait threw it away, and when it went over the line of scrimmage, that's what caused the penalty flag. What you do a lot more, Mike Dover is going to tell us officially, so I'll hang on here a second. Illegal receiver now, Phil, against the offense. Five-yard penalty, previous spot, second down. What teams are doing more frequently now, Tim, in terms of their screens, is they're sending their people over the line of scrimmage by throwing the pass behind the line of scrimmage that's allowed in the rules but if the ball crosses the line of scrimmage those guys can't be down there second and 13 now quick drop steps up and incomplete intended for cremus again well, all those people down in Tallahassee won't like me using this term in any sense in a Florida State game, but that was a clear case of gator arms that time by Jason Kremis. He did not want to extend the arms at all. I talked before about reaching for the ball when you come over the middle. Jason looked like his elbows were surgically attached to his ribs. Yeah, you're right. That contingent would not like no, to hear that, that analogy. Yeah, that, that, that phrase, but they understand in what context it was made, I hope. Third and 13. Trip formation with three wideouts up at the top. Foley with time. From a big time, got those arms out there and made the catch for another first down. Hey, they can only stop themselves today. I tell you what, I, I like the fact that Kevin Foley came right back to Jason Kramis. He said, hey, that play was there. Let's go right back to it. 
This time he makes a better throw as well so that Kramis can protect himself as that ball gets there. Keeps the drive alive. Four receptions for 55 yards. It's interesting how Milanovic looks so often to Andrew Carter and Walt Williams, and then it's Mansell Johnson and Jason Primus when Foley comes in. They distribute it equally, but with different quarterbacks. They have their favorite targets. If, in fact, Williams is going to get to 100 yards on the day, it'll be difficult because Armella and Todrick McIntosh have had just about all of that trap play that one could offer. Well, you know, the one thing to consider next week when Notre Dame plays Florida State, and certainly they've got, on paper, a much better ground game, but Notre Dame's not going to operate out of this spread offense, so Florida State's defense is going to be able to align differently than they do against this wide-open Maryland attack. finally bulldogs him inside the five of florida state only the outstanding team speed of florida state this time in the person of ken alexander saves the touchdown again that fold screen to the wide receiver good blocking up front teeter made a good block on mac knight but Derek alexander is able in pursuit to deny premise the touchdown only seven of nine 154 yards he sneaks much as he did for that first touchdown against know. Florida State. That will be very close. Tried to quick snap it again like he did on the touchdown, too. And Florida State might have had the edge on the penetration. There's a Florida State player down. As you watch the quick snap and tried to move it ahead, not going as well as they want. It's Chris Coward. One of the outside linebackers who was a little slow getting up. It's four down territory. We know that, given the problems in the kicking game for Maryland. Fourth in the yard. Williams, no way. Stopped well short, and the Achilles heel of this offense rears its ugly head yet again. Tell you what, they got great penetration against Jamie Bragg. The center was just driven back. 14 play drive, but no points. And two very lengthy drives for Mark Duffner's team have come up empty today. Well, there, there's the area that Maryland still needs to work on. That's five double digit play drives in the last two weeks with no points. See, look at how that offensive front third, you know, the center and the two guards got no movement off the ball that time. It was great penetration by the interior of that Florida State defensive wall. He actually lost a yard, maybe a yard and a half on that play. 10-16 remaining from Bird Stadium. The Seminoles, number one. And holding. Florida State with a 22-point lead. 10-16 remaining. Tim Brando, Jack Corrigan, happy to have you with us. Our ACC game of the week. It has been entertaining and surprising to many that Florida State's defense would have relinquished as many yards as they have from a defensive standpoint to this Maryland team, particularly on the ground. Time of possession with Maryland, but again, two empty drives of tremendous length. And Danny Cannell, on the positive side for Florida State, has been outstanding in relief of Charlie Ward, not starting today because of the aforementioned bruised ribs. Total yards mounting for both teams, Jack. Well, after that first down carry, we are over 850 yards of total offense after the three-yard gain by Sean Jackson. Florida State at 446 and Maryland at 406. Again, shifting back into the eye with Jackson dotting the eye. Play fake. On the out pattern to Ellison. Omar Ellison on the receiving end. A freshman from Griffin, Georgia. 6'1", 203 pounder. Has an apostrophe before his name. Yeah, it, 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 you have to check it a second time. <laughs> and uh, to check that information, he's actually a junior. 
getting plenty of playing time today. We've seen probably as many receivers in one game as one could ever see at the collegiate level. Jackson beyond the 20 to the 22. Nice tackle there by Radcliffe Thomas. You talk to Larry Slade, the defensive coordinator for Maryland, and also Mark Duffner, the head coach. The first adjective that comes to mind when you talk about this true freshman from Woodridge, Virginia, is instinctive. Just is always around the football, reads the action of the offense, and then figures out a way to get there and get involved. Second and eight. Right up the middle. With Winnie Look at what he did to Lamont Gore. Now that doesn't tell you something about the difference in athletes from one side to the other. Well, then you just have to rethink yourself. I mean, this is just amazing what he did to Lamont Gore. Great block that time on Ratcliffe Town. You see Lamont Gore go flying. <laughs> William Floyd. I mean, put a pop into Thomas. Thomas stepped into the hole, but it was a lead play this time, and he met William Floyd and got knocked out of the way for Jackson's first down run. And now, going deep. Incomplete. A bit overthrown. Intended for Philip Riley. Seminole fans want interference. Riley, the sophomore from Orlando, Wanted interference on Andre Johnson, but they're not going to get it. Well, that's one more name to add to the receiving list as well. <laughs> yeah, my, my depth chart looks like an F paper from about the eighth grade. <laughs> Little this, that, and then a few more. That's right. Second and ten. A pitch to Jackson. Again, you have to credit Johnny Hicks defensively. We've done so many times today. Jaime Flores also involved in stringing that one out. And also Radcliffe Thomas. This time, he doesn't make the play again, but this time he made the better hit on William Floyd than on that play in which Floyd knocked Radcliffe out of the way. Thomas this time was able to step up and take Floyd out, and that'll enable Johnny Hicks to come over and make the tackle on Jackson for a third long setup. Time the marker comes down against Crozier, and you're going to get an argument here. They're going to call Strozier for interference, I guess, as they ran stride for stride. Well, a little bit of a I don't know. Wow, I don't know. You look at that particularly given the play that preceded it. You have to wonder if that's not a reactionary call. Pass interference, defense, 15-yard penalty, previous spot, first down. Mark Duffner, among others in attendance here at Bird Stadium, a little unhappy. Now, there's a little contact right there. Looked like he might have grabbed him on the arm, and that's you can already see the official reaching for the flag. But the head is where it's supposed to be. He's playing the ball. You can see he's playing. I'm not arguing that the intent was not to commit a foul, but I don't believe he committed it. Well, that's what Orlando believes, too, Jim Brando. Thanks for identifying <laughs> I appreciate that. This is not to suggest as a couple of yards are picked up up the middle by Jackson. Clock continuing to tick. That's a game officiated by humans, and I think many times you see that. The play that preceded it was by far and away the better chance, in my opinion, I think what has interference. I think what happens is not so much that, uh, as fans like to say, the make good or whatever, as maybe it makes the official more intent on subsequent plays to watch for that particular activity. Second and eight. coverage that time by Andreal Johnson. A little whooping going on there between 
and I, Riley. I tell you what, it was like Johnson was the intended receiver and Riley was the defensive back because Cannell throws this ball a little long and you can see Johnson making the break for the ball and Riley's there to break it up. See, that's what he's trying to do at the end. I mean, it would be a spectacular catch, but he was really just trying to somehow deny the interception. Third down and eight. Florida State at the 43-yard line of Maryland. Seven for 11 and third down conversions this afternoon. Swing pass out to Dunn. short of the first down inside the 40 at the 38 Mike settles out of Temple Hills Maryland played at Bishop McNamara made the tackle It'll be fourth in about two and a half and call it three yards and it's really beyond the range you'd want Bentley to try one so they're gonna go for it on fourth down and the Maryland fans booing at what they may view uh, Florida State trying to add it on they they just want to maintain possession. That's not. He has the first down at the 32-yard line. Oh, you, if you're Bobby Bowden, you want to control the football the rest of the way as long as you can and maybe give you a field goal kicker. Now, I would think they might perceive it adding on or piling it on if they kicked a field goal with less than five minutes left. But believe me, Bowden needs his team to practice field goals. They've, they've not been as effective over the last couple of years in terms of the field goals. Scott Bentley, highly recruited, has come on and he's missed a field goal today and not a very long field goal either. Lord Dunn takes the reverse this time. You'll recall they ran that for the touchdown to Tamaric Vanover earlier. Ratcliffe Thomas converged to make the tackle. Inside the 30 at the 28-yard line. Fake handoff this time, and Thomas staying with it. As I said, instinctive player, making the proper reads. He's going to follow along with Dunn, the fake, and Thomas, and good effort from the strong safety on Hell Guerra to come up and, and disrupt the play. Quick pitch to Dunn. Ward Dunn, he's dangerous here. But the Terps have enough bodies near the boundary to stop him. Jaime Flores led the charge. The senior from Baltimore, Poly. Clock continuing to tick with under five minutes remaining. Mark Sturdivant, who is not real big and now checking out the senior tri-captain, uh, has had a tough day against some of those big tight ends. Lonnie Johnson at 240 in the tackles. I mean... Perel's 295, Connolly's 315, Hernandez and Laureano both go up around 280, 285. Dunn takes it inside the 24 first down. Raphael Wall made the tackle. You know, you look at uh, Bobby Bowden over there, and what an interesting man. He's accomplished so much as we look at Dunn, who's been successful this afternoon. William Floyd leading the way again. He's able to get by Al Wallace. Raphael Wall comes up uh, along with Eric Wood to finish off Dunn, but not before Florida State tacks on another first down. Jackson. Jackson. Jackson touchdown. Too big, too fast, too strong, too often, too often. Well, the running game inside, they run a lot more of their eye formation with the tight end today. That's always a part of their package, and with Jackson and Dunn, it could be very effective. Point after by Bentley is good. 521 total yards of offense, 31 first downs for Bobby Bowden today. He'll need more of that next week. He may have his mind on that right now. Six of seven touchdown drives have measured 56 yards or more today for Florida State, and another lengthy drive this time leading to the touchdown. 
A run by Sean Jackson to key. 94 yards, 14 plays, 617 off the clock in that last drive, aided by a controversial pass interference call. Seven touchdowns in their last eight possessions. And here's Williams again. He has 90 yards rushing so far. Trying to pick more up on special teams and has stopped at the 20-yard line. Bernard Wilson made the stop. Milanovic will come back into the game at quarterback. So we've seen Kevin Foley on two series today, and he was successful on both occasions. Once, he sneaked it in for a touchdown after a big pass to Mansell Johnson, measuring 50-plus yards. The other was a long drive that ended as one other drive by Milanovic to open this game with nothing on the scoreboard. in trouble, dumps it to Andrew Carter, who is hammered by Sean Hamlet. What a big day and an upset Saturday in college football, and it usually precedes a big day the, fo the following week. We're getting it. Look at the cardiac pack. They went for two, did Michael Caine's team, and missed it. The waning moments now of the fourth quarter. They were down 21 to nothing at halftime. Boston College with the upset of Virginia. Look at all the points. Yes. Chestnut Hill today. That is a huge game for LSU's coach Curly Hallman. He may be saving his job if he can hold on and win that game against Alabama today. Brilliant. 95 yards, 100 plus yards against Florida State. That is quite a day. Quite a day for a true freshman. Just inserted because of the problems for Mark Mason out of that super back position. He has lived up to the billing. A super day for that super back. They've run the draw play. They've run the counter, the counter trap. All to effectiveness today. Spread out the defense with your formations and then run inside. a superb play. Walt Williams on the receiving end. He had the touchdown catch earlier from Scott Milanovic and Milanovic did all he could to stay alive, getting away from the pressure. Well, you're 6'4", 220. Sometimes you got to make yourself small like he did right there as he ducked underneath the tackle try of one Florida State defender and somehow found Walt Williams for an eight-yard gain. Second and two. Ball at the 47 of Florida State. Williams bounces outside. To about the 44-yard line. He reminds one of Warwick Dunn. They're very similar backs. Quick feet. Well, let's, let's always look for, uh, in a running back, the ability to shift on the fly, to shift at full speed. And you're right. I mean, this young man's got that, as the kids like to say, got that shake and bake. Yep. And Milanovic, even in a rough year, he has the opportunity to do something so many other quarterbacks here have not done and went on to pro careers. That's pro for better than 3,000 yards in a season. John Kaleo did it, but he didn't make it into the pros. Quick pitch to Williams. Adding up the numbers on the ground, Williams cracked out at the 33. And I have a feeling that many of the contingent from Maryland that are still here are entertained by the history that they're watching from this freshman, this true freshman that's having this kind of day against the vaunted FSU defense. 115 yards is certainly a day that he's going to remember. And hey, if you're a fan of offensive football, how about 69 points and about 1,000 yards of offense? You have to be entertained by that. You might say, why is Derek Brooks still in the ball game as he made that tackle? To get used to the pops, to get used to moving around after missing a number of games with the nerve problems in his shoulder and neck area. You want this great player back at game speed for the big game next week against Notre Dame. 
can hear the speculation all next week. Wonder how Charlie Ward will do with all the time off. <laughs> Williams, about a yard, maybe two, that's all. Wouldn't it be nice, though, that the only concern you might have for your team would be weather and maybe having a little too much time off? A lot of coaches, Mark Duffner, I'm sure, wouldn't mind having that being his number one concern. Well, you also consider the fact that he's, he's played all these games and he practiced this week. He's just not playing in the game Saturday. A lot of it's looking long. Boy, Corey Sawyer's speed, he almost caught up to that. I'm sure when Milanovic got rid of that one, he had no idea it would be as close to a Florida State defender as it was. I mean, the fans are a little upset that the Maryland's not called timeouts, but Mark Duffner's saying, hey, you know, let's work here on trying to score like we had no timeouts in case we get into that situation down the road this year or in the seasons to come. And if we score, fine. If we don't, fine. I mean, we're learning here. That's what he talked about yesterday. Every game you can learn new things about yourself. Duffner, outstanding young coach, grew up in Arendelle, Virginia, just a football pro from College Park. Here's another football pro. Batted into the air by number 75, Enzo Armella, who has been very active this afternoon. And that will do it for Maryland's offense. And the fans are quite appreciative of what they accomplished today. They, they should be. Armella is also pretty happy about ending the day with a batted pass. Sophomore out of Miami, his family uprooted by Hurricane Andrew last year. He's not too bad on that defensive front. He's not the, he's the one guy out of maybe that entire defense that doesn't look like a poster child for a, a great football team, you know? He, he doesn't fit the mold, but he sure plays pretty well. Maryland, 457 yards on offense today. That's the third time they've done it in their last three meetings against Florida State. We'll be back. Florida State leading Maryland, 49 to 20, waning seconds here. And uh, Duke and North Carolina State have completed, and Barry Wilson carried off the field on the shoulders of his players after announcing his resignation earlier this week. An emotional win over NC State, the cardiac pack finally go to the well once too often tried for the two-point conversion and didn't get it florida state up only 28 to 20 in this one responded down the stretch with three touchdowns as now bobby fountain and his team can say all right all the speculation is over now we can talk about notre dame i've known him quite a while that's not a happy coach no now he's going to congratulate duffner for an offensive showcase that made his defense look like they had not looked all year against other acc teams that is not a happy camper he's thinking about beckton mcdougall and what they might do next week we'll be back to wrap it up in just a moment the Exxon ACC Game of the Week has been brought to you by Exxon and its dealers and distributors who invite you to try high-performance Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. By Delta Airlines. With the industry's best overall record of passenger satisfaction, even business trips are a pleasure on Delta. By Coors Light. Aged ice cold for that pure taste of the Rockies. Reach for the Silver Bullet, the right beer now. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Win dixie the low-priced leader. And by First Union. When it comes to service, everything matters. Our final score here at Bird Stadium in College Park, Maryland, the Florida State Seminoles remain number one with a 49-20 win over the Maryland Terrapins. Two outstanding performances today on the offensive side. Danny Cannell subbing for the injured Charlie Ward, 28 of 38, 341 yards, five touchdowns. And Allen Williams, 30 attempts, 118 yards. They don't oftentimes accomplish that against FSU. They are our BMW players of the game. Back after this word from your local stations. Beating the Maryland Terrapins by a final score of 49 to 20. An entertaining day for the Maryland Terrapins offense. We enjoyed bringing it to you this afternoon. Next week on many of these ACC stations, you'll see Maryland, NC State, Georgia Tech, Wake Forest, or Virginia against Clemson, a big one coming up at Death Valley.
Kez McCorvey and company vault their way into number one for yet another week in their visit against Notre Dame. There's a look at our staff and crew. Our thanks to Marty Aronoff and his outstanding performance with our stats. Jefferson Pilot Sports Production staff outfitted by Lee Apparel, the brand that fits. For Jack Korg and Tim Brando, so long. You've been watching ACC Football.